Hey, voice! Hello, Scorv. Thank you for letting me know there's no sound. Now there is sound. Okay. Now let me do my fancy pointing trick again. Let's see if this works. Molding. Nope. Molding and casting. Nasir, Paradusk, and Andy. Uh, yes, I'm going to be teaching you to mime. So if there's a glass box in front of you, you do, oh, wait, you do this. Flap, flap. You're like, hey, I'm trapped. What do I do? And you can knock. And then you can look to the side. And make sure you purse your lips really weird. Like, you're like, oh, huh? There you go. Mime lesson complete. Now you know everything you have to, you could ever know about my name. All right, well, you guys are kind of catching me in media res, which is a fancy, is that Latin? In media res. It's probably Latin, although you never know. It doesn't sound French at all. Anyway, what it means is I'm in the middle of stuff. Um, and I was like, hey, you know, I might as well stream some of my sloppier, messier parts of the process. I'm in the middle of shooting my tutorials on, I'm gonna be doing another series on mold making. Uh, not because I particularly enjoy mold making um, and not because there aren't many other mold making tutorials out there, but because specifically uh, for a lot of the upcoming more exciting projects I'm gonna be doing, I'm going to be utilizing mold making and the one video series that I have on it is not super great. So I want to make a super great one. I've been doing a ton of research, making sure that all the info I give is, is good and specific. And um, so most of the tutorials that are out there, they're really uh, bit green. You can hear again. Excellent. And welcome. Dottie. Hi, Dottie. Um, Evening from Norway says day sleepers. <laughs> he uh, day sleeper confirms in media res is Latin. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, all the other uh, sculpting and molding tutorials that that I've seen so far, they I think they err on the side of being too general because they're trying to apply to everyone doing everything and. So they're talking about like just all these different materials and um, well, mostly it's it's the number of materials that they bring up. And I'm just going to say specifically this product here. This is what I use. If you buy this, you're more likely to be able to do exactly what I'm doing. And so hopefully I fill a little niche there. Um, I do use several different materials. What I'm doing is I'm doing a, a different tutorial because I'm also trying to make this very uh, helpful and searchable for you guys so that when you're like, hey, uh, I'm doing a two-part mold. Let's look at Josh's video on two-part molds, not like a three-hour video on every kind of mold. So I'm, there's gonna be an intro, and I'm gonna talk about mother molds, and then I'm gonna have a separate video for every different kind of mold, and that'll be cool. Okay. Uh, Nasir says, Josh, can we pre-order the book before it's finished so you can get an idea of how many you're going to print? Um, well, I can almost guarantee you that the number of pre-orders that I could possibly get would be so small as to not warrant a count. Um, and I will never run out because it's going to be print on demand, so I don't actually need to know the numbers. But I super appreciate your enthusiasm, and I, man, I cannot wait to share it with you guys. Did, uh, Nasir, I don't think you were there when I was working on one of the characters from the book in ZBrush. But if you haven't seen that, you should check that out. I talk a lot about uh, creature design and uh, how it applies to the, the book that we're writing. So what is in this mold right now is garbage. I'm going to show you this. Uh, so this is an idea that I had, and I'm 90% sure I'm going to pull it off, but it's not there yet. And the idea is, here's, here's the original. This is an Octorok from The Legend of Zelda. And 
I had this idea that, you know, they, they swallow stones and then they shoot the rocks out at you, right? So I had the idea that his kind of sacky head thing is filled with rocks. And what if his skin was like semi-translucent because it's been stretched so far that you could actually see the rocks in there? And so if I, if I mold him and cast him in a translucent resin, as you can see I did here, you can see how translucent it is if I, if I hold it up like so. Right, and then I would I would paint the inside of that like rocks, and then when you flip it over, you would see it it looks like he's he's full of stones. And to do that, I did one mold where I did the body, and then I made another mold where I did this clump of of rocks. And then that sits in here. I pour the resin, I pull it out. So the problem that I was running into was mostly that this clump right here is so big that when I was pulling it out it kept ripping you can see the, the molds tearing there and stuff um, and also it was actually penetrating the surface in a couple areas there were little pinholes and that wouldn't work there needs to be some thickness of material in there so I've been going back to the drawing board a little bit I can keep the main mold that I did but I took, I took one of the pieces that had holes. You can see uh, all these areas where I patched over the holes. And I went in and re-sculpted in there to make the, the uh, shape of the rocks a little more um, uh, thick, I guess. <laughs> so, so there's less chance it's going to penetrate the skin. But I cannot get it to focus. I don't know what I was doing the first night I had it hooked up, but it focused perfectly. There must be some setting I changed. Anyway, so yeah, my hope is I'm going to take this guy, stick him in here, do more rubber, and have a, a modified version of this. The, the reason it has these sticks on here is so I could line it up when I sit it down. It'll line up perfectly, because that's super important. If it's just kind of in there loose, it's going to bump against one of the sides. So, um, and when I was using the this uh, clay material, I had an idea of like pressing it into the mold and sculpting right in there, um, and so that's why there's mold material in there. But uh, that wasn't working, so I gave up on that. And then while I was pouring these re resin busts, I had extra resin, so I just dumped it in there to make sure it's all kind of congealed into one chunk and should be easier to get out, is my hope. Nasir says, I was there, the one with the shark nails, right? Oh, okay, great, excellent. I, I beg your forgiveness for forgetting that you were there. Uh, I'm, I'm really good with faces and recognizing people. I am very bad at remembering and recognizing names, so it's going to take a little while. I apologize for that, but that was a that was a great idea to do shark nails. I'm totally going with that. Nasser yes, says they look a bit rough. Are you going to smooth the surface? If yes, how? And Paradusk says why not rotocast it? You'll get a super easy hollow. Uh, I assume you mean mold that way. Yeah. So the reason I don't want to rotocast which for people who don't know, that's where you, you pour the resin in and you kind of slush it around, is because then I would get a really smooth interior and I really want to capture the texture of rocks coming through. I want there to be some facets to it. And I, it would just be kind of round lumpies if I rotocast. Okay, so Nasir is saying they look a bit rough now. Do you mean the, the like rock pieces look rough or do you mean the the sculptures that I cast look rough pop yeah it came out nice it's, it's actually I'm <laughs> Super impressed by this material. This is this is one of my favorite new discoveries this year. Uh, Smoothon started making this product called Freeform Air, 
and it's a two-part epoxy clay um, but it's super like it's so light it floats and it uh, it's so it's super carvable and sandable and apparently it pushes really nicely into molds I mean like if I would have really tried I could have got the the legs totally like filled in with it there's still you'll, you'll see a little a few issues like on the eyeball there you can see the um, you can see that seam running through it hello camera focus well if I could figure out to get my camera to focus you would see that it has seams what happens if I put it up to this one Anyway, take my word for it. It's mostly awesome, and I think you could use it uh, for certain um, press mold applications. Okay, so now my big question is, can I fit this into there? And I already know the answer to that because I've tried fitting deposit it back into the mold that usually is tricky business especially with these long bits and bobs sticking out and then I'm assuming this lip that I sculpted up here is not going to match that so what I need to do is actually just hack off a bunch of limbs Nassir says the blue guy still looks rough yes Yes, he's definitely rough, and that's kind of what I'm working on now, is making sure that future casts will not be that rough. Okay, I'm going to mute the sound while I do this, because this is super loud. All right, you guys didn't hear all that grinding, right? I assumed that I was muting the right thing. <laughs> this is why I don't take showers before I do molding and casting stuff. 
to just end up covered in dust and powder. Oh, hi, Amy. Welcome. Let's see, should I not be wearing a mask for that? Oh, I should totally be wearing a mask for that. Thanks for the reminder, Paradesk. Or, score. Uh, Paradesk says, it'll probably be easier if you turn the mold inside out than stuff the cast into. Correct. And rest in peace, Octrock. Yeah, well, you know, um, all these little legs, you can probably cook into a soup or something. Lucy, hello. Uh, says, my screen just says waiting. Is that correct? I've never done this before. It should not just say waiting. It should be loading uh, my beautiful face and wonderful sculptures and video of me talking and such. However, I do not know how to cure your problem. Paradusk, is the stream on for you? If not, just go to Josh's channel and click the latest stream. Yeah, I've, I actually don't know how to access my own stream, so I've never done it before. Okay, so this mold is not, I mean, it's, it's distorted around the edges, but it's seated really well down there, and I think that's probably fine for the purposes that I need to use right now. We'll see if it sits in the mold, right? Lucy, welcome. Glad you got it working. Yeah, so the idea is I need to brush rubber into this cavity. Last time I used pour pourable rubber, which uh, the Mold Max 30 that I have is a lot uh, softer and weaker. It's uh, tin based. And this stuff, this brush on uh, mold material I have is silicon based, which generally means it's uh, uh, tougher. It's not going to rip as easily. Um, and I also want to make uh, thinner walls around there. As you can see, this one, I just like, I stuck a pin in there while it was setting. So there would be a, a little bit of uh, give to it. So it'd be kind of easier to pull out. Let me get my camera down. Um, but this way, there we go. Okay, so I want to pour, or I want to brush on mold rubber in here and have a, a bigger cavity so that I can just kind of pull it out like a sock. Andy is asking if anyone else is working on stuff while watching. I certainly hope so. Compressor, hi, Compressor77. First live, not late night in my country. Hi, man. Hi, Compressor. Are you from Germany? guessing completely based on the name, which is probably not a good way to guess. Amy says, technically I'm supposed to be doing homework, but nothing fun slash interesting. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if homework was fun slash interesting? Wouldn't it be cool if we could figure out a way to make the educational system play to our strengths and our passions? Wouldn't it be great if our educational system taught critical thinking skills and how to analyze media instead of a bunch of stupid facts that we're never going to remember again? Okay, I'm going to get... Sorry, I forgot to pull my rubber out here. I'll be right back. could not find my open set so I'm just gonna use another set 
Uh, this is Rebound 25 Brush On Platinum Silicone Rubber. Compressor says from Italy. Oh, excellent. I want to go to Italy someday. You guys have a lot of cool ruins. I've never seen ruins before in real life. Onassis, welcome. Andy says, oh, you mean make it more productive, as in uh, education? Um, yes. As in prepare people to be uh, good, useful citizens instead of simple-minded consumers. Uh, White Devil, welcome. Day sleepers, I have to be in, set, in bed soon, so no projects for me right now. Andy Garrett says, watching Josh work and talking with y'all make conditioning clay much more bearable. That's cool. Uh, I just got a clay conditioning machine. I, I actually contacted the um, developer, the inventor of said machine, and she sent me one for review. So that's going to be in an upcoming uh, Sculpey tutorial series. Uh, I hope it's awesome. I, I haven't actually pulled it out of the box yet. But I'm going to be talking about um, like colored Sculpey and, and other specialty polymer clays. So I'm going to need a good way to condition it that's not either with my fingers, which gets painful after a while, I'm sure you know, or through my old pasta machine, which is just covered in crap and detritus that gets in the clay. Paradox says the education system teaches a lot but hardly any important things like how to pay taxes and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's it's kind of got this leftover idea of like we need to know all these facts about like when battles took place or you know capitals of states and stuff which are cool to know and I mean if if it was true that when after a student takes a test they actually retain that knowledge that that might be more worthwhile but the fact that you, you don't you learn to study for a test and then your brain dumps it because it's got to take on the next thing um, yeah, it's not so good. We live in an age where we can look that stuff up instantly and we need to be teaching people how to look stuff up and how to sort through the garbage that's out there. How to tell what fake news is, how to tell, uh, you know, if a, if a website is reputable, um, how, to, how to spot fallacious arguments, uh, how to understand their own cognitive biases. That's a huge one. Like, that should be taught from grade one. Cognitive biases. Uh, just, it's not that they would fix our cognitive biases, but just being aware of them is so helpful. Bitgreen says, I'm working on a little Falcon Man figure. I will try casting molds when I'm done, so I've really been looking forward to the stream. Awesome. Rodel Toledo. Hello, Rodel. Uh, can be a sculptor even without drawing skills? Uh, yes, I'm not as good at drawing as I am at sculpting, that's for sure, because, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm really bad at perspective. <laughs> and so the nice thing about sculpture is you get free perspective. You don't, you don't have to earn it. Okay, now I've got to figure out how I'm going to, so... On this last plug that I made, I just used these paint stir sticks and bridged them across like this. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that exact thing. I, I was thinking of, let's see if I can find them. I have um, like uh, skewers, barbecue skewers, I was thinking. Because if they were, here's the thing. It's really important, whoops. It's really important not to get garbage in your mold. Um, it's really important that 
the plug is very precisely placed which means it has to fit perfectly in these things. So actually, it's probably a better idea to stick with the stir sticks. I wonder if I shouldn't just use these. So they're already kind of set up for it. Let's see what it looks like under all this garbage. Oh, it looks broken. That's what it looks like. Okay. Well, that settles it. Amy says, I've just got a bunch of SAT stuff to do, so nothing that I'm ever going to use outside of this one test. Ah, that's the worst. Andy says, sculpting can help your drawing skills as drawing help your sculpting skills. It's improving your fine motor skills, muscle memory, and observational skills. It's all related. Yes, definitely is related. And improving one area of artistic endeavor does indeed improve all others has been my observation but it's not something I can exactly a B test I can't go back in time and you know not draw and then see if my sculpting skills stagnate I don't know Paradusk says drawing and sculpting help each other a lot in my opinion once I started sculpting most of my drawings had more realistic forms yeah I could totally see that is in sculpting you you have to uh like everything has to be actual and real <laughs> and drawing you can take a lot of shortcuts you can uh you know the really good uh 2d, 2D artists know their form so well that they're they're not just like making verisimilitude they're they're making actual sort of um Oh, what's the word? Like like a simulation of a three-dimensional object as opposed to just gestures that are meant to indicate three-dimensional objects. Nasser says, Josh, how do you work with gloves for a long time? I did that once and my hands were sweaty and felt weird. Uh, yeah, that happens in the summer. It's cold enough here in Washington State that uh, I definitely don't get sweaty. So right now I'm drawing out notches I'm going to cut in these so that it can sit over the lip of my pore spout. Actually I probably don't need as big a pore spout on this one because I can brush my rubber up and over. When I was using pourable rubber, it had to be really high because you can't, you can't like brush it around. It just sinks to a certain level. Um, well, I'll leave it as is and see how this works for now. Mute you guys again real quick. Mostly work. This needs to go up a bit.
Paradesk says, I have seen that type of saw before. What's it called? Uh, this is called a... Uh, what? Something like all-purpose? The Craftsman. I see the bag over there and it still does not have the name on it. it look up all-purpose saw and see if it doesn't bring up something like that. Yeah, it's really cool. It has a bunch of different attachments, so you can use it for sanding and sawing. It's just the right size for most of the stuff I do. I still wish I had the room slash budget for a table saw, but I get around it with my jigsaws and, um, and that guy. Oh wow, and I've been doing all this sawing and stuff with my rubber open. That's that's not a good idea. Got ahead of myself. I've done that several times now. I keep I keep pulling the uh, master out of the mold before I do the mother mold. That's not good either. Because yeah, mold making, it's one of those things where I do it just rarely enough to where I forget a bunch of important things between times that I do it. So, doing this tutorial series has actually been really helpful because it's forcing me to, like, research and call to mind all that stuff that I tend to forget. Day sleeper. Okay, class in the morning means I should get some sleep, unfortunately. Hopefully I'll be able to stay up late slash get early for the next one. Alright, day sleeper, thanks for stopping by. And uh, thanks for having such an incredibly appropriate name for what you're about to do from my perspective as someone for whom it is day and now you are sleeping. make sure this sets in those grooves perfectly like that there's no wiggling going on right now there's some wiggling because of the way the mold is bulged up from this uh, lip that I have in there so I'm just kind of slicing off the bottom of this paint stick so that it fits snugly like it doesn't have to touch that part when I'm doing the final the pore, it just needs to be touching these two parts perfectly. Paradesk says, Halloween is pretty close. What are your thoughts on it? Um, well, as far as holidays go it's certainly one of the most fun um, sometimes I'm tempted to do an elaborate cool costume I mean it's the same thing with cosplay it's like uh, I, I know a lot of cosplayers some professional cosplayers and if you're doing it as a profession that that totally makes sense to me but man the people who just like spend a year or two years making these giant elaborate things and then they walk around a convention center really hot and uncomfortable for three days showing it off it's like the the um, effort to reward ratio seems too low to me well I guess it's more the opportunity cost like making elaborate costumes is cool but the 
end result to me it's not something that I'm keeping around forever you know but I definitely respect the people who do it well and uh, admire their craftsmanship and all the work they do to educate the community on all their techniques and processes and tools it's really cool stuff Andy says it should be more times of the year. <laughs> Halloween 1 and Halloween 2 and Halloween 3. Just maybe like every three months have another Halloween. Paradusk says, yeah, goofy skeletons need to be decorating houses 24-7. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, skeletons in general are just really cool. They're cool aesthetically, they're cool scientifically, they're cool uh, mythologically. Can't go wrong with goofy skeletons. This is taking way longer than it should to just make two sticks sit properly. All right, I think I finally got it. Now I'm gonna put some little textural grooves in the wood here because I'm gonna be brushing rubber up over them because I need them to, to latch onto it super well. And actually, let's do this real quick. How loud was that, you guys? Was that intolerable? Did it blow your speakers? Did it blow your mind? Nessier says, Josh, are your kids and wife interested in art as well, or are you the only one? Uh, yeah, actually, a very, very artistic family. I've got my oldest son uh, writes screenplays and is trying to develop a television series. My younger son is working on YouTube uh, Let's Plays and doing a lot of creative editing and stuff with that. Um, my wife does... Well, she hasn't done lately, but she used to do painting. She does a lot of photography and piano. And then my mom is a writer. She's the one writing the books with me. Uh, my dad has some artistic talent that he uses from time to time, but uh, he's a dentist, so <laughs> he's kind of the outlier. Yes, here. So speaking of skeletons, you should look up Brooke from One Piece. Uh, Brooke from One Piece. I don't know what One Piece is. Is that a show? Is that a website? Is that a YouTube channel? Is that an anime? Uh, he's amazing. Andy says, the cats just flipped. Excellent. Anytime I can make cats flip, um, I'm probably doing something right. Okay, I think I'm ready to actually mix some rubber and get a first coat in here. The downside to this um, brushable rubber is you got to build it up one one thin coat at a time. Oh, at least they got to start out thin. Uh, 
Tip number one is anytime you're pouring uh, mold rubber or resin, just have a paper towel in one hand. Uh, guaranteed, 90% of the time, you're going to be grateful that you had a paper towel in your hand. All right, everyone is telling me that One Piece is an anime. It's on Crunchyroll, okay. Amy's asking if it was ever manga or just more popular as an anime. Andy says, yes, manga as well. Yeah, are there any anime that aren't also manga soon to be developed into a whitewashed Hollywood movie? Yeah, Paradox says, pretty much every anime has manga. I like to wipe the lips of my jars before I close them. It tends to help with reopening later. Andy says, Pet Shop of Horrors. Everyone read slash watch that. Um, yeah, I've never developed the bug for anime, despite the fact that I spent a good chunk of my childhood living in Japan, uh, I just, I don't know what it is, uh, something about the style, uh, I know a lot of it, but this isn't with every anime, but every anime I've seen has this problem of all the females do this simpering voice, where it's like that, that baby thing, and it's it infuriates me. It actually like gives me a physical reaction of fury. I cannot stand simpering, infantilized female characters. Drive me up a wall. And it's oh god, like Sword Art Online. I tried to watch that. I got I got to season two, but man, the the love triangles, the like every cute girl wants this guy and he's just so generic and boring it's like why do you want this guy and i don't know i don't know i just haven't had good luck with the animes but i know everyone tells me i need to watch uh cowboy bebop everyone says i need to watch evangelion or something Closest I come is one of my favorite, well, probably my favorite animated film is Spirited Away. That movie I love. It's got such great atmosphere. I don't know if Miyazaki even counts as anime. I mean, I assume it does, but it just seems very different to me. Nasir says, the orange substance looks delicious. <laughs> yes, it does. I have made multiple jokes about eating it. Every time my wife comes in, when I'm working with it, she asks if she can have some. Uh, Paradusk says, see Halloween everywhere. It's in the chat. It's in the resin. <laughs> Andy says, or Witch Hunter Robin. I assume that's another anime I need to see. Uh, Nasser says, no piece is different. It has goofy voices and ugly characters. Not all anime is just li is like that, just as all cartoons are the same. And I assume you mean not the same. Uh, Scorv says, watch Death Note. And I've heard people saying that the Netflix movie of it is terrible. Probably because they're wanting it to be just like the anime. Uh, Paradesk says, unless it's old anime, I hate it because now everything is focused at horny 13 year olds. Yeah, I definitely get that impression. Seems like a lot of 13 year old power fantasies. 
which you know are cool when you're 13. Andy says yes, Ghibli is anime. Traditional anime. Oh, okay. So, I lived in Japan from 1977 through 83. I was two to about seven. So I actually watched a lot of, like, that's probably traditional anime, like when it was on TV. Like I remember the original Speed Racer, I was watching that in Japanese. Um, some of the some of the giant robot fighting monster ones. Can't remember what those ones were called. Paradox says no, he hates anime. I, I want to say uh, I hate it. I've just I've never found any. Oh well, okay. I hate the stuff that has simpering infantilized women in it. Um, the other stuff I just I don't like there's clearly some cultural uh, barrier like there's there's some some language that's being put down that I'm not picking up as far as like expressions gestures attitudes tropes like all that kind of stuff that the shortcuts to storytelling that I didn't absorb when I was young and watching anime back then and I still don't absorb now, sadly. Squarf says, don't watch the Netflix movie of it. Okay, done. Consider it done. Nessier says, yeah, mix that up. I love mixing things, not necessarily to use them later for something. <laughs> you just love mixing things, huh? You should, uh, you should get a job as a chef or something. You can mix all day. Amy says, I like uh, Black Butler, but mainly for the aesthetic. Compressor says, I usually sculpt with headphones or listening TV, but sculpting listening to you live is priceless. Oh, awesome. Paradox says, oh, not you. I meant the dude that made Ghibli. Oh, yeah, Miyazaki. Oh, God, have you seen that video where he's just tearing apart the this uh, team of game developers who were, they made some crazy, creepy, I can't remember what it was for, but... Um, I think it was like stop motion that had been all, or not stop motion, um, uh, wow. What is that called where you put on a green suit with dots? Motion capture, there we go. Uh, I think it was like motion capture that had been all distorted and stuff to make this really creepy, weird horror uh, animation. And Miyazaki is just like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is. I think he says something like, this is an insult to all of life, or something. <laughs> and the faces of the developers are just so downcast. Because, I mean, he's, he's like an idol there. And, you know, all, all these animators have probably looked up to him most of their lives. And then to have your, <laughs> your hero tell you that what you just made is an insult to life. Oh, priceless. Yeah, he's definitely a grumpy old man. Garrett says, you're not alone in hating the high-pitched, childlike women voiceovers. Yeah, I mean, it's not... Uh, and it's not just the American versions. I mean, I've, I've watched anime, you know, in the Japanese, and they sound like that, too. And it's like... I, I know that's like a, a character type. Um, it's just a character I can't stand. I don't know if it's a general cultural thing in Japan where they want their women to be like super disempowered and just gaga over all the men and whiny. 
and like babies, but um, hopefully not. Hopefully it's not all Japanese. I mean, of course not, right? Like if you watched Hollywood movies and that, that was your impression of Americans, that'd be a pretty distorted impression. Now, if you watch me, you'll know exactly what all Americans are like perfectly. That was a joke. I'm a little, I'm a little different. Alrighty. So we could probably get away with just pouring this in and slushing it around. Stephen G. Hello, welcome. Paradusk says, anime is nothing but trash. God, I love that man. Oh, did he literally say that? <laughs> Josh, why you mix them in one cup, then pour it into another? Uh, that's because when you mix in one cup, there's going to be residue on the sides from, you know, part, part A and part B. They're not going to be mixed totally perfectly, no matter what. So pouring it into a second cup makes it so that your mix is a lot more um, mixed. You're not going to get streaks. You do not want unmixed uh, rubber. That is terrible. Bit Green says, I'm not sure, but is the animation technique you describe rotoscoping? Now, rotoscoping is where you take live footage and then you like draw over that. Um, now, motion capture is where you use computers to track tracking dots or balls or tape or any other thing that a camera can track um, and translates that to 3D motion, which you can then apply to a rig, which then animates a CG character. Rotoscopy, so when I did the dance for the Guild Wars 1 male necro, that was essentially rotoscoped. Like, Bobby filmed me with his camcorder and then um, took that footage, imported it to his computer, put it as the background behind his skeleton, his rig, and then would just like frame by frame through me, you know, jumping around and banging my head, and then would move the skeleton to, to match that. So that's another form of rotoscoping. I don't know if it has a different technical definition when it's happening like on the computer and not, you know, with this piece of celluloid over a piece of film, but seems like exactly the same concept to me. Now I'm just going to continually, I'm going to sit here and babysit this for about 15 minutes is usually what it takes to, for this, this rubber to start setting up. I'm just going to keep rubbing it up around the sides so that there's a big void in the middle. Nasir says, you're going to mold this thing with something you already molded. Man, this is like Inception. Yes, this is definitely Moldception. Um, there are artists who will, like, they'll sculpt in a medium like wax or, or um, monster clay or, or those other kind of wax-based clays and then make a mold once they have it roughed out and then cast that in wait so well there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different processes i guess so, so some people will start with a soft clay and then mold that and then cast that into a harder clay like wax or castelline um not castelline 
pl not plastiline. What is that stuff called? Uh, I've never actually used it. I need to. Um, yeah, cast it into something harder and then sculpt again and then end up casting that yet again. So I can't imagine the cost of rubber. Although for the first like uh, what is that called? Is it is it actually called a garbage mold? <laughs> There's a term for it where it's like it's it's only made to to be you know molded once and then they destroy the mold to take the uh, the piece out and it's fine because all they're doing is transferring to another medium. One of the nice things about what I'm doing right now is that I don't care about bubbles very much because the inside shape that I'm making is supposed to be rocks and pebbles and stuff so any bubbles are just gonna perceptually I, I think just look like gravel paradox says bye oh someone's leaving Andy says half a pound of sculpey conditioned wouldn't it be nice if there was a machine with auto feed for folding and rolling it that would be amazing. Uh, Amy says, I'm having to go now. See everyone later. Okay. Bye, Amy. Thanks for stopping by. Get those uh, SAT numbers up. Learn all that stuff you're never going to use. Stefan says, the specific shade of orange reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. Um, so... I don't know if you live in the U.S., in the States, but over here, this is exactly the color of orange sherbet. Like that fruit, icy, ice cream stuff. It's not ice cream, it's sherbet. I don't know what the difference is. I think sherbet doesn't actually have cream in it, maybe? It's just like, just sugar and fruit flavoring? I don't know. Paradusks asks, uh, does it look like cheap coffee? That would be very uh, terrifying coffee. Uh, Nasir says, maybe KFC sauce? <laughs> uh, I have not seen, I, I don't eat much fast food anymore because it makes me fat almost instantly, so I cannot attest to that. Uh, Andy says, orange goop maybe? Or gojo? Oh, I don't know what gojo is. Stefan says, I had to Google Sherbert, so probably not that. Stefan says, seems a little light for toffee. Paradusk says, that's why it's the cheap stuff. <laughs> KFC sauce? <laughs> oh, coffee. Yeah, um, if coffee was this color... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they have coffee this color like in Japan. Have you seen their drinks? Their drinks are bizarre. I remember when I was a kid, my favorite drink out of a vending machine was sugared milk. Like it was literally just, I don't know, like 2% milk just loaded with sugar. <laughs> it, was, it was very delicious for a kid. Ah, Linda says a dream sickle. Yes. A dream sickle is essentially orange sherbet on a stick. Uh, 
Paradusk says, Josh, how did you separate the two types of silicone? I imagine that's what you're using. Um, separate the two types. You're going to have to be more specific. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, this is silicone, and this is silicone in here. Um, if you missed the beginning, I basically took a mold like this that I had done some additional sculpting inside. I cut off the legs and the nose and I stuck it in there and this lip I had sculpted up around it. Paradusk says, I've got it. It's that one kind of melon. Andy says, cantaloupe? Uh, yeah, it's, it's close to cantaloupe. I don't think well, so a healthy looking fruit is not going to be like incredibly monochromatic like this. So imagine if a cantaloupe was this color only, it would look very fake and weird. But there are definitely uh, this kind of tones in cantaloupe for sure. Steven says, Orange Goop is a weird brand name, but I guess it's spot on. I have not heard of Orange Goop as a brand name. Uh, what, what is it? Is it a food? Is it edible? Would, would you buy something called Orange Goop and then eat it? Reminds me of um, one of my favorite Dr. Seuss books is uh, Bartholomew, Bartholomew Cubbins and the Ooblek. Where it's like this medieval kingdom and this green goo just starts raining down. I think some sorcerers summon it or something. It's, uh, his, his first couple books are just awesomely like dark and bizarre like that. I, I really love those. Bartholomew Covens and the 500 Hats is his other early book that I'm aware of. And uh, yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty deep. Kind of an emperor's new clothes sort of thing. Paradusk says if they're both silicone, they're gonna bond together. Yes, that is why I have this this lip separating them. So the inside of there is not this mold. It's uh, it's like part of a cast because I'm essentially reproducing this plug that has the rock texture in there. I'm just doing it with uh, slightly less aggressive rock forms. And it should, once it's, once it's cast and once it's attached to these sticks, it'll come up over these sticks, uh, it should never contact this other uh, rubber because I need to have resin all around it. Andy says orange goop is a hand cleaner. Okay. Stefan says Google has lots of results for orange goop, goop hand sanitizer. Okay. That makes more sense. I would definitely sanitize my hands with orange goop and I would be more hesitant to eat orange goop. Andy says used in mechanics to remove oil. It's also great for removing casting materials. Ah. Okay. I may have used that back in the day when I took a, sh a shop class my s sophomore year of high school. That was such a bizarre class. It was really sad, actually, because uh, it was me and a group of friends uh, who were kind of like the straight-A kids, you know, the nerds, whatever. And the shop teacher, we, we would have tests every week, and we would just fill in literally anything. Like, at one point, it got we got so brazen, we were like, okay, we're going to test this. Does he actually read our tests at all? And so... For all the answers, I put salad ingredients, and I still got it, you know, an A plus. And then all the kids who were kind of the, you know, the stoners, the losers, 
Those guys, uh, they just always got like D's or whatever. It's, that's that's not that's not a good way to teach you guys. I don't recommend that. Paradesk, you're getting worried. Yeah, you know, um, that's warranted. It's warranted to be worried that I would be doing something incredibly stupid like bonding uh, two molds together. Uh, <laughs> in this case, though, I think we're all right. Now, Sierra says, Josh, tell us the story of your logo, the lion. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be doing a tutorial on because I'm going to be re-sculpting that for my uh, two-part epoxy clay uh, tutorial because I want to I want to do like a really you guys the new intro to my video series is gonna be amazing oh my gosh I can't wait to do it but I, I need to sculpt the thing first so I'm gonna be doing tutorials on how to sculpt the thing that's going to be the new intro to my channel uh, anyway the the design itself is basically so I was raised my parents read me fantasy pretty much every night growing up as a kid and so um, a lot of George MacDonald a lot of um, uh, C.S. Lewis Tolkien uh, uh, what's her face who did the uh, there's a movie coming out of it if it had, hadn't come out already what is that called Anyway, point being, uh, yeah, so that was that was kind of my upbringing, and the uh, Narnia, Chronicles of Narnia is definitely my favorite, and um, the Aslan character, the, the, that's kind of what the lion is based on. It's not supposed to be Aslan himself. Um, the, the logo came about as a conjunction of a couple things, so like... Uh, like Aslan himself is a metaphor or simile for for Jesus, and you know uh, was raised very Christian, and the whole idea of that sacrificial love aspect is is something that I retain to this day and is very important to me. So uh, when I was doing the logo for my business and thinking of like what what is the point of my business? Like, what is the reason for it? A mission statement? Um, my mission statement is make the world more loving with stories. And uh, so, so anyway, to me, that symbolism of the sacrificial love, that's like, that's, you know, if I'm going to preach anything with my stories, with my art, I hope it's that. It's like, um, and then there's a line from a song from this band, Mortal, that I got into in high school. There's one particular line where he says, How fierce the love. And that just stuck with me. Like, fierceness and love being this seems like a dichotomy, but, I mean, it doesn't need to be. And so that, that's what I was trying to capture in that logo was like, this Christ figure, you know, the, the crown of thorns on that, and the, like, fierce expression, and the lion attributes, all that stuff kind of comes together. Um, and then breath of life, that's also a biblical phrase. But it, like, to me, it, uh, it resonates in, like, I'm trying to breathe life into characters and, and worlds and stories. Kind of be a, a mini, like a baby creator, you know? Um, and one of my favorite scenes from the Chronicles of Narnia is where uh, it's in the Magician's Nephew where Aslan, like they go back to the beginning of the creation of Narnia and it just starts out as dark and there's this description of like this resounding like music happening and then like this breath and, and Aslan is breathing Narnia into being. And the description was just so evocative and cool to me. So, yeah, I guess all of that goes together. I'll have to come up with a with a more um, eloquent way to put that all together for my tutorial. But that's the basics of it. You asked for it, you got it. 
Josh says, is there a main female character in your book along with the guy? So there um, is a, at, at the beginning, he's, he's kind of in love with his, um, he, he's forced to go live with his family because he caused an accident that burned this little boy and this little boy has a little sister. And so he lives with that family um, on and off can't remember the exact amount of time but long enough to fall in love with the with the girl but then once he's forced to kill his best friend slash her brother um that obviously kind of cuts off any potential for that relationship so he's he's really heartbroken as well as being exiled from his from his community his land everything he knows and loves um and then about halfway through the trilogy, he starts getting hunted by uh, these warrior women who are like soldiers of this kingdom that he ends up running through and stealing a kind of a, a slavery type stone thing that allows them to, uh, to enslave people. And so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, cat and mouse chase where he's trying to escape Lilk the uh, female warrior who's tracking him down. And then the other uh, main female character in the book is Scola's, um, uh, I guess she's kind of like the equivalent of a fiance in their culture. Um, they end up saving her from these terrifying creatures who have attached an egg sac to her. And uh, this is Scola's big chance to, to find a mate. So uh, she's, she's got a great character arc as well. Uh, Stefan says, a friend told me Aslan is just lion in Turkish language. Blew my mind a little. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's not very creative to just name your character after <laughs> after a word in another language, but eh. Um, Sophia says, hello, may I ask you something? Would you recommend Milliput, uh, gray-green for sculpting? Thank you. Sophia, I would not recommend Milliput unless the only thing you're sculpting is like itty bitty miniatures. If you're doing anything this size, you're gonna you're spending ten times more money than you should be. If you want a medium that works almost exactly like Milliput and is a hundred times cheaper, use use this stuff. Aves Epoxy Sculpt. You can get this on Amazon, you can get this from the Aves website. But a giant jug like this is like 30 or 40 bucks. And obviously the amount of material in there compared to like the little strips you get a milliput. Um, just, just way, way, way better. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of set this to the side and let it slosh and open some of my other casts. So this is the Bowmark casts I've been doing. And I was having problems, obviously. Let's see if you, how well you can see that. There we go. Yeah, so I was, wow. You focus and you unfocus. Why do you do that? Why? Look, let me try something. I'm gonna put, put just a big flat background. Okay, now you gotta focus, right? There we go. No. You jerk. It like focuses for a second and then goes away. Why can't it stay there? Anyway, hopefully you can tell that there's little there's little bubbles on the tips of all the dreadlocks on him. Uh, which I knew was gonna be a challenge. I knew that when I sculpted them, I had some ideas of how to address it. So I actually did two different molds for 
the tutorial because I wanted to show, hey, here's a here's an odd thing uh, to try to work around. Let's see which which one works better. So in this mold, I was also showing a bunch of different ways to make mother molds. This is like one of the easiest where you just use Bondo or any other material and just fill it in a cup. Um, it works great except when your mold isn't like nice and bullet shaped. Paradusk or uh, Nassir says no spoilers. Oh, sorry about that. There, there were definitely some spoilers in there. But I don't think anything that would like ruin your experience of the story. Uh, Paradusk says most cool stuff in Latin is just really mundane, but it sounds cool. <laughs> yep, just ask Harry Potter. Sophia says thanks so much for the answer. Appreciate it a lot. Yep, that's what I'm here for. That's why I do what I do. Stefan says, hard to put into words, but due to how many languages have roots from Latin, it often feels like a Latin word conveys the nature of what it's expressing, even when you don't consciously connect it. Yep, that is true. And a lot of that, certainly in English, I assume that's the case in a lot of other um, European languages, uh, there's a lot of prefixes and suffixes that are Latin-based as well. So yeah, you, you do get a certain sense for a word really well that way. But I've never had so much trouble extracting this. I wonder if some of the resin leaked out. But I mean the nice thing is that if I'm uh, if I'm if I destroy this mother mold it's cheap, cheap and easy to remake. There we go. Destroyed. Fine, whatever. Oh, yeah, I see it leaked out there and it's attached. Yep. So, I tried pressure casting these. This was my latest uh, experiment was to pressure cast and see if that would force the resin into all the dreadlocks better. And it certainly does force the resin wherever the resin can go, including out the seam, the parting seams. Scorf says, might want to try different colored gloves. White foreground can mess with autofocus. Okay, that's an interesting thought. I think the I get these gloves at Costco nice and cheap, although I'll bet I can get different colored gloves at on Amazon for an equally good deal. I should look into that. Pop. All right, well. It's better. There are still definitely a few places here and there where it's um, where there's still bubbles. I mean, those are pretty easy to fill, so not a huge deal. All right, let me cut this real quick.
Bitgreen says, I'm new to epoxies, but they seem really useful. Starting really sticky and then drying quickly for more stable building. Yeah, uh, once I once I started using them, my horizons of possibilities definitely expanded. Of like what I felt I could do with my sculpture. Nasir says, this looks satisfying. Yeah, definitely cutting them out feels great. Score says, thought you were melting it away there for a second till I realized uh, you had muted it again. Right. Uh, Nasir says, why it's pouring water? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, Paradesk says, you don't go through with the vent idea you had for the tips of the dreadlocks. Oh, I guess you didn't go through. I did. That's the other one I did. I'm about to show you that one. Um, Sophia says, I agree with Nasir. It is super satisfying. Yep. Okay. So let's look at this other one. So I did two of them. Oh, oh okay. So here's the problem. Right off the bat, uh, when I put it in my pressure pot, I had it next to this, and I think they kind of uh, tilted together. So the this part here is not filled in all the way because it was tilted. Okay, I think there's a fairly easy way to fix that. Uh, let's see. So here's another kind of epoxy clay. This is the kind of stuff you get at hardware stores. This, a lot of it is five minute and a lot of it is 20 minute. And I want to find the fast one. Let's see, what is quick wood? 15 to 25 minutes. Mm. Not what I was hoping for. I mean, another option is I could pour a couple drops of resin and put it in there. Um, but then I'm wasting more, like, stir sticks and cups and blah, blah, blah. I just, I don't like wasting. I don't like putting more things in landfills than is necessary. I mean, technically none of this art is necessary, so. But, you need balance in life, right? Um, let's see, do I have anything faster? Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. I can just fill it with epoxy. This is five minute epoxy. Andy says, and just broke the plastic to my Makin's crank. Where's the duct tape? What's a Makin's crank? I don't know what that means. Stefan says, probably where you least expect it. Yep. And he says, LOL, surprisingly, because of the hurricane, it was in an easy spot. Oh, nice. Okay, guys, if this starts spilling, you yell, okay? Because I don't, I'm going to be paying attention to something else for a minute. Only you can save my sculpture. It's a truly interactive experience. It's like a, like a really slow, quick time event in a video game. I hate quick time events. I hate them so much. 
Is it just because I'm bad at them? That is certainly part of the problem. The biggest problem with them is that in a game, you're learning core competencies, you're learning specific mechanics, strategies, that kind of stuff. And then out of nowhere, suddenly you have to be good at something else that's completely irrelevant to everything else you've been learning. It just really upsets me. Unless the game is completely all quick time events, then it's fine, because that's that is what you're learning, right? It's fine. It's when it comes out of nowhere, you know, you're fighting a boss or whatever, and then, oh, quick, press this button on this controller, even though you've been using the controller for the other system on another game, you know, for the past week. Suddenly you have to remember where our version of the square is and press it immediately or you die and have to start the fight over. That is, that's just not cool. Not cool, you guys. Oh, speaking of which, so I tinted my resin with this uh, So Strong stuff from Smooth On. And I can just add a drop to my epoxy to make it match. Not that it really matters down here. I'm going to be painting over these probably anyway. But it doesn't hurt to just add a drop. Andy says, might ought to epoxy over the plastic handle, make it last with better grip. Yeah, epoxy is great, isn't it? Uh, my Macon's conditioning machine. Okay, is it basically like a pasta machine? Like it's just a roller with a crank sort of thing? What is mine? Mine says al dente on it. Which I'm pretty sure is not Latin. That sounds Italian. Pretty sure it's a kind of noodle? Is that like like describing the flatness of a noodle or no the hardness the hardness of a noodle right paradox says if you leave the resin to set in the cup you can easily pull it out and save the cup sometimes you get another one from the resin yeah uh sometimes i do that certainly with the second mixing cup the first one will often get streaks and it's not a good idea to reuse that one um but yeah, definitely with, with rubber too. You can just pull that out. You know, it, it occurred to me, I have never tested um, this kind of epoxy with a uh, Mold Max 30. So hopefully this doesn't completely destroy my mold. I doubt it will, but It's fine. It's all a learning process. And I budget both uh, financially and emotionally for having a lot of stuff get wrecked whenever I do anything with molds. <laughs> it's just, it's so complicated and it's not something I'm passionate about learning about. It's just something that I have to learn about to do the kind of stuff that I want to do. It's like file organization when you're when you're editing or doing special effects, you know what I mean? Or like, you know, my day job, I make video games, but how much of my day do I spend making video games as opposed to being in meetings or, you know, making room on my computer or sorting through my source versioning software, blah, blah, you know, it's just like, there are just elements of making art that aren't the fun part. And for me, it is this. Uh, Sophia says, I want to cast a doll in resin. I never did this before. Do you think one can get it right the first time? Or doesn't it take lots of try and error? It scares me a little, but I really want to try it. Uh, yes, that is going to be one of the first things I say in my tutorial. Is you need to budget for failing the first time or two and be totally okay with that 
practice on something you don't care about much first. Um, yeah, that's just that's just part of the overhead of, of casting. As, as, I mean, that's my experience. Maybe it's not for everyone, but certainly for me, it's just you're gonna screw stuff up the first couple times. And I mean, I've I've done a hundred or so uh, molds and casts in my life. And I'm, I'm still screwing things up. So, <laughs> I think it's one of those things where the people who do it all day, every day, for their job, they're not gonna screw up like that. But uh, yeah, for those of us who just do it occasionally, just, just, just accept it. Just accept you're not gonna get it right. You can see this is starting to harden up pretty pretty well. I want to make sure that it's not like super thick in one area and thin in others. I mean, I am going to be going over it with another coat regardless, but um, the more even each coat is, the easier it is to do that. Paradusk says, resin will cast completely solid. Cast in silicon if you're planning on getting your doll out of there. Yeah, I guess it depends on how complex your doll is, but... Um, yeah. Definitely easier to do a flexible mold than to do a rigid mold. You have to really know your stuff to be able to, like, cut your, um, your mold apart or your or your uh, master apart, you know, your doll into the things that needs to be separate to do a hard mold. You should definitely do a silicone mold first. Which is probably something, you know, I hadn't even thought of. That's kind of a really basic concept that I don't have in my script yet, but that's a really good reminder. I should bring that up. It's like, the way you sculpt your thing is going to determine a lot about how you mold it. And if you plan on molding it, you can sculpt it in such a way that you can um, take, take it apart and sculpt it in multiple, or mold it in multiple pieces to make it a lot easier for yourself. Easier in some ways, not easier because then you have to go back and put it all together when you're done, but uh, Stefan says al dente means firmly cooked, nice to bite. Dente is tooth or something. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, compressor says, yeah, smooth on product are magic, but I like sculpting. Molding casting is not so fun. Makes me nervous. Yep. I am right there with you. I'm still at the point where I'm not totally comfortable making molds. Um, but I am much, much, much more comfortable than I was the first 99 that I did. I just, you know, you get more and more used to it. And you come up with, with methods for avoiding the mistakes you made previously. And he says, get a sample size of the silicone and casting material if you're not ready to invest two to four hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, 
Well, like this stuff, I was able to get at the local art store for $35, I want to say. And so it's, it's double this amount, because there's a part A and a part B. And um, what else do you really need? I, I'm not going to say off the cuff, because I don't remember. I'm going to definitely be putting together a long list of shopping supplies. Because there's a lot that you could get, but don't necessarily need to get to start off until you're more sure that it's something you want to do regularly. Yeah, a perfect example of that is like a vacuum degassing chamber, right? You can spend 200 to a thousand dollars to get that set up. <laughs> but if you're not going to be casting a lot of things, then it's really not worth it. Stefan says, by the way, Andy, has the hurricane left the American mainland? I haven't checked the news in, like, weeks, so I'm not sure when it was going on. Andy says, yeah, it's gone. Maria is the new threat. Always nice to have a new threat on the horizon, huh? Stefan says, oh, another big hurricane. When is that one coming? Andy says, NOAA website has the tracker on it. We're checking it twice a day. Paradusk says, if you need a mold to be a little stronger, just add plaster of Paris on top of the softer mold. That's a matrix mold. Yep. So like this part here, this is the mother mold that I have, and it sits around the soft rubber part to make sure it doesn't distort. Set up. Not quite, but close. Uh, what else can I be working on right now? Um, I can do some cleanup on this. You know what? I'll show you how I how I fill in the tips of these hairs, these dreadlocks. First, I'm going to put on a different CD. I decided to put this on because I haven't heard it in years, and I made that album cover for them. They're just some indie band you've never heard of and never will hear of again, but I made that back in like 1998 or 99. Yeah, so I, I did a sculpture of this guy and Photoshop. The, this is, oh man, look at that beautiful Photoshop work there. Uh -huh. See those drop shadows and bevels? Are you impressed? You, you shouldn't be. Anyway. Paradusk says, degassing chambers are way cheaper to make, in my experience. Yeah, so... So, I did the make your own degassing chamber thing um, with, a, with a paint, a paint pressure pot. I don't know, by the time I was finished pouring the silicone and stuff like that, uh, to make the lip on the, and then bought the plexiglass and then all the various fittings and parts that I needed. I'm looking at, um, it's obnoxious. 
obnoxious music. I should really turn it off. Um, the the I'm right now I'm looking on Amazon. I'm following uh, some vacuum pump chambers with the pumps, the whole set, and it's like 200 bucks. So I don't know if that's still the case anymore. That it's cheaper to make your own. Nasser says, I'm watching quietly, waiting for the mold to be revealed. Yep, building tension. Okay, so this is the epoxy clay. And yeah, it works just like Milliput or that plumber's epoxy that you can get at hardware stores. But it's just much nicer than the plumber's stuff. Gives you. There's actually several different... Uh, types of this there's epoxy sculpt there's epoxy clay and then there's this other really liquidy stuff that I used to make uh, the mother mold here can't remember what that's called epoxy slime or something not really but that's what it should be called it's super sticky and awful to work with okay This stuff is really nice. This is Aves Safety Solvent. They sell it along with this stuff. And you can use water to smooth it down, but Safety Solvent is just, um, it's just better. So water will give you a little bit of like white streaks over it. And I'm not sure if it's affecting the texture or not. This stuff um, just smooths it really nicely. See if I can. I uh, can't get much closer, can I? And it is not cool how dark this sculpture is. I'm sorry about that. I've got 100 lights shining on it, and it's like a black hole in the middle of the frame. Basically, I'm just picking these little little boogers off of my clump and shoving them onto the tips of the uh, dreadlocks where there's bubbles. Sophia says, thank you so much for the answer, Josh and Paradesk. I love this live stream. I don't want to bore you guys. Just want to add the doll is made in parts. So I will cast. So I will not cast the whole thing. I will try it. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, uh, especially if it's in parts. That, that definitely simplifies the learning curve. And you're definitely not boring us. This is exactly what the stream is for. is people sharing their knowledge and experience. Like, I have already, I mean, I've only been streaming for a couple of weeks, and already I've learned several things from you guys. I've been inspired to uh, change my design on one of my characters a bit, um, and it's just awesome. I'm really excited about the possibilities of what, like, what this medium of live streaming is and can do, so... Thank you for participating, Sophia. I'm super excited that you're here and asking questions. 
Uh, Andy says, make sure the CFM on the compressor is what you'll need to degas with. Some of the cheaper ones don't pull enough. Yeah, that was exactly what I what I asked uh, on the you know Amazon lets you ask questions of cust of customers who have bought the product, and I said, can it pull 29 inches of mercury because that's what Mold Max 30 requires, and someone just answered back and said they had no problem getting 29. I think I've seen mixed results. I think there's, yeah, so vacuum pumps in that price range are going to be hit or miss. Uh, the one that I have leaks oil all over the place, like I have it sitting on a, on a plastic lid, you know, upside down so it can just sit in a pool of oil because it's constantly leaking. Um, and it does not get me my 29. It gets enough to to help, but not to completely degas, sadly. I think I got it for like around $200, um, probably eight or nine years ago. Bit Green says, I thought you used plaster for your outer molds. Do you prefer the epoxy slime you mentioned? Um, I, my, my favorite material to use for mother molds is, um, what is that called? Uh, okay, if I think of it, I will shout it out. I can't remember the name right now. Uh, it will definitely be in, in the tutorial that I'm doing. Um, I just used a variety of, of products to make mother molds for the sake of showing how, like, how many things you can use. It's, it's really versatile because, I mean, all a mother mold needs to do is be soft when you're putting it around uh, your rubber and then get hard and there are many many products like that um, so yeah I was just showing a big range yeah actually the stuff that I used to make this is the worst thing imaginable I'm gonna look it up real quick All right, this is called epoxy paste. So, do not use epoxy paste. It is not a great material. I have not found a good use for it yet. I got a like five gallon bucket many, many years ago and I've just been looking for ways to use it on anything. I think it's probably best for filling potholes, to be honest. Uh, Paradesk says for air bubbles, uh, for air bubble fixes, mixing together super glue and baby powder into a paste is a good alternative. It's easy to sand and paint over too. Really? I have not heard of that, but you know what? Um, I just happen to have some super glue right here, and I just happen to have some baby powder right here. Let's give this a try. In the spirit of learning. You know what would be cool about that too, Paradesk, is that um, I'm assuming that I could mix in my tint and end up getting a color match for the... Uh, for the resin that I've got going on. We double double read that. Super glue and baby powder into a paste. Huh. So how long does that paste stay active, I wonder? See I'll start by hmm. Let's see if there's a good way to pour this. I don't no, there's not. Wow. 
genius crash 66 says how long is the work time for that two-part putty you're using uh it's about a, about an hour to an hour and a half uh the the thicker you have your your lump the faster the the it sets up um well this is this is probably an excessive amount, isn't it? Paradox, what kind of a mix ratio do you recommend? Uh, Andy says things like this is why this channel is great very eclectic knowledge set and gets into the details that may not surface be surface knowledge yes exactly uh, Bet Green says genius work time should be one to three hours gradually losing viscosity yep um, it's at its like peak for about an hour I think uh, Nasir says, Andy, I agree. Josh is just super cool. Oh, well, yeah, and talented, of course, uh, and explains things in a way easy to understand. Hey, I appreciate that. That is exactly what I try to do. Okay, I'm going to put several drops in and see what that feels like. <laughs> Mix in a little bit of that pigment. Hmm. I may want to mix this on a flat surface. Okay, it feels like it's hardening up on me yeah like this has become a chunk hmm. okay let me try this in a, with something flatter Paradusk says, I've never seen that done before, but it wouldn't hurt to try it. Uh, are you talking about the super glue trick that you mentioned or something else? Uh, Compressor says, yes, yeah, super glue and baby powder is a good filler. Paradusk says, it usually just until it's like icing uh, cake. About one part super glue, two parts powder, but I may be mistaken. All right. Let's experiment. This doesn't look like I'm doing cocaine at all. Okay. Okay, I got a pretty good icing slash paste going right now. How long does this last? Is this something where you have to mix it between every application? Or can it sit on my palette for a little bit? Oh, now I can't find a place on this one to put it. Yeah, I like how well it's pushing into the the little bubble voids.
And it looks like it's still still malleable. What, has it been like a, a minute? Stefan says maybe cocaine and super glue makes a good filler too. Oh yeah, I should look into that. I'll just uh, break into my cocaine collection. Is that do people have collections of cocaine? I I don't know. I've literally never done drugs. I haven't even done. I haven't even smoked marijuana. Which you look at me and you think, yeah right, Josh. That's true. My birthday is 420 too. Can you believe it? My birthday is for I just I just never felt a desire to alter my mind my brain chemistry. I I think maybe because I'm just naturally a pretty like driven and happy person to begin with. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't want to cast aspersions on those who derive great pleasure and inspiration from drugs. I've just never Never felt compelled to do so. Hmm. Well, that is pretty nifty. Okay, now I'm going to try a test where I mix some of the color in again. I admit that it might be that the color was um, accelerating the set time or something. Nasser says, I'll bet you have a lot of plastic bottles missing lids. Yep, pretty much every time I <clears throat> drink out of the plastic bottle, I grab the lid and throw it in my collection of lids. Paradusk says, I've never seen the filler uh, pigmented before. It usually hardens up after two to three minutes, so work fast. Okay, compressor says, not cheap. Yeah, a, uh, a cocaine super glue mix would probably not be cheap. Uh, Andy says three quarter pound clay. Geez, this is taking a while. Oh, you're still, still rolling. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Right? Is that is that a thing from the '90s? Fred Durst. Limp biscuit, yes, limp biscuit, rolling, rolling, rolling. Um, Rasta says bonjour, Josh. Bonjour, Rasta. I don't. Is that like uh, in Hawaiian how aloha means hello and goodbye? Does bonjour mean both hello and goodbye? Oh no, wait. I remember from Beauty and the Beast. They're all saying bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. And I think they were saying hello to Belle at that time. So, I'm going to I'm going to guess that you're meaning hi. Oh, and I forgot my pigment. That's okay. That was a really crappy mix anyway. I need to find something bigger to mix on. Here we go. Let's try this. Yeah, I think I can mix better on this. Paradesk says some artists take acid for inspiration. Kind of risky move, if you ask me. Yeah, I had a um, a friend when I went to art school who he was a musician, and he kept telling me, "Man, you gotta you gotta drop acid. You're, it's gonna make you so creative." And I was like, "Are you saying I'm not creative now? Like, <laughs> I, I'm. I mean, if it helps you, okay, but." You know, honestly, um, it being illegal is probably the biggest factor. Like, I just, I, why risk it? I don't, I don't understand. Although, um, marijuana is now legal in my state, and I, I still haven't tried it. It's 
probably, I would say, the majority of the reason behind it is probably just still, still a, a hangover from being raised evangelical Christian. That was like, oh, that's what evil people do. And, you know, I, I don't believe that doing drugs makes you evil anymore. But I also just don't care to try it myself. Oh, look, this one got a big old bubble on the chin. Can you see that? Let's see if this stuff will fill that in. Yeah, that color seems to be not reacting with the super glue, I'm guessing. Like, it's, it's clumping up and hardening almost instantly. But yeah, it's definitely, it's not a big deal on a raw sculpture like this, which ideally I'd, I'd come up with a paint job where I could um, just do like a dry brush over the base color and be done with it. But, you know, doing a, doing another base coat over all the patches and stuff, it's not, it's not hard, like hardly adds much time at all. Yeah, Sear says it ain't cheap, but it's gonna sell fast. Yep. Bonjour, according to Rasta, means hello. Oh, bonsoir, I don't know how to pronounce that, means good evening. Okay, good to know. Okay, well, this is definitely something I'm going to play with a little bit more in the future because it's very interesting. Um, but I'm going to go back to my epoxy clay to finish these guys real quick. Spike Sparkle. Hey, Spike. Says, I hear you, Josh. I grew up with required DARE <laughs> anti-drug programs in school. Now pot is becoming legal and seems like most people are taking prescription meds. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, every time I start to feel judgy about it, I just try to remember, like, I didn't, yeah, I, I grew up super privileged like in a family that was intact and very loving and so my psychological profile is shaped by that like there's a lot of deep needs that people have that can be caused by you know just poor upbringings or different brain chemistry or whatever and so like, it's easy to say, oh, man, everyone's using too many drugs. What a bunch of bad losers. On the other hand, it's like, well, I don't have to contend with the things that they're going through. So who am I to judge? I mean, obviously, if you're doing anything to excess and it's damaging you and your body and your family and that kind of stuff, then, I mean... I think that kind of goes without saying. No one needs to get judgy about that. It's like, yeah, duh. Okay, are all these guys? Yeah, okay. All right, time for the grand reveal of yet another one of those guys.
So, you know, I was talking about different uh, types of mother molds. This, this one was made with this freeform air. I just pressed it into a cup and then jammed the, the mold into it. Because the whole point, like all it has to do is just hold the pieces together and keep them stable. Yeah, and it looks like, again, because I had this in the pressure chamber, it squeezed out through all the cracks and probably bonded to the mother mold. So I'll have to break this one too. Paradusk says, the legality of drugs can be compared to cigarettes and alcohol. So it makes sense that certain drugs would become legal if they're not as bad as those two. Yeah. Spike says, I agree, Paradusk. The government wasn't making money on narcotics besides alcohol and tobacco. So those weren't covered in my D.A.R.E. programs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the amount of bad things that happen as a, as a result of people overdoing it with alcohol is just so, so much worse than people overdoing it on probably everything else. Rasta says, I can't create anything without weed. I know, that's sad. Yeah, man, I mean, there's parts of the brain that get unlocked in certain states. Can't deny that. Some people probably can naturally access those states uh, easier than others. Uh, come on, you can do it. Spike says, now I use marijuana to help with anxiety, depression, PTSD stuff, and it's more effective than prescriptions I've been on. Yeah, I hear that from a lot of people. Uh, my wife has chronic pain, um, like really bad chronic pain. And so once it became legal, she decided to give it a try and it did absolutely nothing for her. But like opi opioids don't do anything for her either. Like she just seems to be immune to all medicine that helps other people. There we go. Yep. So you can see right there. <laughs> Looks like a dirty diaper. But yes, that's that's where the resin squeezed out into there. So now this part is a full two-part mold. So it completely comes in half. But it's got this weird thing where you can see this dot here and this one here. I vented all the dreadlocks. And you'll see the mechanism for that here in a second. So they actually have to tear apart. And you can see, when I pull this clump out, how that works. Oh, should be able to. Well, now it's just being stubborn. Now, I'll show you on the other side. So here's the here's the vents. So it was poured like this, right? The resin went in the top here, went down here, and then flowed up through these. So all these little lines here are where the tips of the um, dreadlocks are, but there's tips all over the place, including the front area. So these all had little stems that were going down that snap off when I remove it from the mold. So I pull this back part off. You can kind of hear it snapping and popping. So all of these little little holes in there all have a stem 
that comes out here a vent and it looks like um, the process of putting this under pressure um, Wow, I've not had these problems before. There we go. Okay, so you can see there, there's two of the vents. There's about a dozen of them. It's got so many dreadlocks. I don't know why I was so foolish. I really should have just designed it in such a way that the dreadlocks laid more flat, but it just it didn't look as good to me, you know? It's really hard for me to make compromises for production purposes. And what's dumb is like, I'm the only person who's going to notice the, those compromises. People who get the final product, they, they want to never be like, oh, his dreadlocks are so flat, you know, but, but I see it. Uh, someone's talking about mental health support and meditation slash exercise. The more tools, the better. Paradox says the whole point of meditation is to is not to think. And he says meditation is allowing the mind to focus on one thing. For some people, it can be repetitive action, a simple way to sit and count while breathing in, out, hold, repeat. Uh, usually a count of five to seven seconds. Rasta says there is some YouTube users who boil their sculpey instead of cooking it, and seems like. The sculpt, uh, Sculpey doesn't crack at all with his techniques. Have you heard of it? Is it legit? I have heard of it. Um, I haven't tried it, mostly because I, I don't have much problems with cracking when I bake Sculpey my way, which is just to uh, bring it up to temperature pretty slowly, like over the course of half an hour or an hour. And then after it bakes, just leave it in the oven uh, like overnight you know just turn off the oven and let it sit there and it cools down really slowly and I hardly get cracks that way uh, Stefan says not sure I want that maybe a short time to regain focus and he says Rasta could be done but you'll need a pressure cooker because boiled water doesn't get to curing temp unless it's under pressure now that I did not think about but that does make sense Sophia says, I'm trying to write about the meditation thing, but since English is not my first language, it will take a little to answer. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, even people who speak the same language have a hard time talking about meditation. <laughs> Paradesk says, boiling vibrates whatever's being boiled, so I'd be worried about my sculpture the whole time. Yeah, I, that also seems like a thing. Arsenic and Depression says, yo, dude, got any tips for super sculpy firm when it's hella dry? Stuff's practically disintegrating. Yes, uh, my number one tip for that is throw it away. <clears throat> I mean, or you could spend a day and a half really hurting your fingers uh, trying to mush it around. If you have a pasta roller, that can help, but again, you're just going to be cycling through clumps over and over and over for hours. It's just... To me, it's not worth it. If you are super poor and cannot possibly afford the 12 to 15 bucks for another chunk, then, uh, yeah, I guess time is your only option. Time and pain. Stefan says, that's fine, not my first language either. Rasta says, oh, I see, thanks for the info, Andy. Paradusk says, Andy, I'd just like to get rid of that stuff. It's only cause you problems. <laughs> yep. Uh, Nasir says, what happened to the orange mold? Arsenic and Depression says, ah, poo. Damn Amazon. Uh, I don't know what that's in reference to. Here's the orange mold, and it's doing its thing. I'm probably going to be giving it a second. So you can start giving it a second coat when it is uh, tacky. Trying to find something to tack onto it that's not going to contaminate it. Okay, when it's tacky but not right. So there it's still sticking to the stick. So it's not quite ready yet.
Arstic says, got the stuff off Amazon, Josh. Ah, you're saying, you're saying, darn, I have to get rid of this stuff and buy new stuff. And you went to Amazon. Now I'm following. And he says, arsenic, it could have partially cured in transit. UPS, US, PS, and UPS get toasty. Uh, same for box stores, really. But during cold months, or if it's never cold where you buy in person. Oh, buy during cold months. Yeah, uh, that is true. A lot of times it'll be sitting in a hot warehouse, semi-baking. What is the downside to polymer clay that bakes at such a nice low temperature? <laughs> is that can happen. Boy, I'm just having a heck of a time getting these guys out. RX 77. Hey, Prescription 77. Sorry I missed it, but do you have any tips on adding the vents? I uh, just can't get it right ever. Well, I am clearly in the process of getting it wrong myself. So, um, <laughs> I just watched a pretty good uh, video on uh, Brick in the Yard. Check out their channel and do a search for mold vents. And they go over some some stuff that you might find helpful and I'll of course be sharing all of my successes and failures on the uh, molding tutorials that I'm going to be uh, coming out soon boy that's just not coming out let's try some heavier duty uh, tweezers there we go and he says I buy super sculpting medium off Amazon never had an issue with one or two day shipping unless it's too hot out Paradox says I got firm and I've had it for a couple of months and it still works fine yeah I mean I, I've worked with firm for the same block for literally years and it's been fine My garage probably never gets above like a hundred, I would say. That's Fahrenheit. I don't know how to translate that to a reasonable Celsius temperature that everyone else in the world can translate, but. Nasir says, what are you pulling out, Josh? It looks disturbing. It reminds me of bad memory. <laughs> uh, yeah, this could remind you of all sorts of ter terrible things. Um, these are the little, the little vents, the sprues that came off the backs of all these dreadlocks. It looks like I lost some of the mold here. So that will happen when you have a cavity in your master that is um, like a little cul-de-sac, a little dead end that has slightly more area inside, up, tucked up in there. So when the rubber gets in there, it fills that up. And then after you pull the mold a couple of times, the rubber weakens to the point where it just rips. So now on the next cast, there's going to be a big blob there. Fortunately, it's the back of the head, not a big deal, but those are the kind of like little things you pick up as you, as you gain experience with the process. Uh, RX-77 said, I did with the ghost dog. Yeah, yep, that's the one I, I just watched last night. Uh, Andy says it's about 30 degrees Celsius. 100 Fahrenheit is 30 Celsius, okay. 
Well, I feel like it doesn't usually get hotter than that. I mean, it definitely gets pretty sweltering in here, but like if I put on a tank top and don't do like really aggressive sanding, I can usually handle it out here. But man, once once <laughs> once you start doing like hard physical manual labor in 100 degrees in a garage, that is not fun. But I'm starting to get to the point where my garage is getting too cold and I'm going to have to have heaters on all the time. Krista says it's 37.7 Celsius. Stefan says I'm not sure I've ever been at 38 Celsius heat. Actually, I probably have been while in Spain. Oh yeah, I mean if you were there in the summer, I'm sure. Another place I need to go someday. Also says I may not be very interesting to you. You might want to skip this, Josh. It's not an answer to. Oh, this is an answer to Stefan. Okay, no, I'm not starting to think when I medicate, meditate, I stop thinking. My problem is I overthink all the time and have a hard time. Uh, something about blocks in my mind also blocks my creativity because the thoughts are so fast, they won't form into something productive. Thoughts are just rushing through my mind. So when I start to meditate, I try to stop thinking. It's uh, complex. Oh, and now it's scrolling away. I can't read it. Uh, something about finding something that helped you personally. Stefan says, do you also focus on a task? I'll look into it, thanks. Yeah, I want to learn to meditate. I keep hearing about it from people that I respect a lot. I, the opportunity cost for me of like all that time that I could be doing other things that I already feel guilty for not doing enough of makes it so I haven't been able to get over that hurdle yet. Sophia says, also ever heard of ASMR vids? They calm me down too. To wrap this up, meditation brings me into a state where my mind gets free and I'm super creative and productive and can focus on creating stuff. It releases my creativity. But you all have to try what type of meditation works for you personally. Yeah. I think that stuff's interesting. I think I think human brains are super fascinating and the tools and tricks we've come up with to modulate it in various ways are fascinating. I think it's interesting mostly because like if you want to be available to help people um, having your your own sort of mental life sorted out and having the bandwidth to, to be able to help in a healthy way. That's just awesome. Like if you, however you get yourself there. Uh, Nasir says, here it's 127 degrees Fahrenheit. What? <laughs> Where are you, in Death Valley or uh, like North Australia? Arsenic says, this is my ASMR. Yes, this is, that's my specialty is ASMR. I definitely have the voice for it, don't I? That uh, kind of high-pitched, nasally, uh, constantly uh, changing pitch and tone and frequency. That's perfect for ASMR. Uh, Spike says, yeah, find a meditation that works for you. It comes in all forms. Empty mind, mantra, focus, mind, active meditation, walking, certain arts, etc. Glad you found something that works for you, Sophia. Yep, that's awesome. Andy says, you can meditate for 15 minutes, even five. Longer is better, but don't try a marathon before you build up a resilience for it. Yeah, um, my favorite podcast is, um, is um, Sam Harris's, and he's a big proponent. He actually uh, is working on an app for meditation. And the, the stuff that he says about it, it's just like... Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, I want to do that. But um, 
yeah, again, it just comes back to that opportunity cost. Like, you know, I'm a professional game developer, and the amount of games that I that I actually play is is not enough for what I should be in the medium that I work. You know what I mean? So I feel guilty about and bad about that. Um, and the more I do that, the less I'm spending time with my family, and the you know the, the more and the less I'm doing this kind of stuff. So there's just I don't know. I think it comes from being so driven in life. Like I want my life to mean something, and like I found a calling which is which is like I I want to make. I want to inspire people to be better, more loving, more creative people, right? And so doing that means building a platform, which is what I'm doing now, so that there are people out there who actually listen and participate in what I'm doing. Um, yeah, and it's, so if I'm just sitting there on my floor, like, meditating and not working towards my life goals, I don't know how I could ever get my brain to shut up about that. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way. And, you know, from what I hear, all the testimony I hear is that it makes you better at all the other stuff that you want to do in life. But, I, yeah, I'm not to that point yet. Uh, Nancy says, Josh, if you want to learn how to meditate, download an app called Headspace. Stefan says, from what I heard of meditation today, it sounds like I'm already meditating every time I cook. Yeah, I think, so there's this thing called the a flow state that sounds very similar to meditating where you're just, you're doing something that you're totally into and your mind is like, yeah, it doesn't think about other things. You're just in that perfect, almost like a trance. I don't know. Uh, Stefan says, I don't know, read that. Uh, RX-77, when I do meditation, I think of other things, but I was told it's okay. It's not, it's a about letting go and not focusing on the noise. Yeah, that's my understanding is that no matter what, you're going to have these thoughts float by and you just acknowledge that they're there and then let them go. That's what I hear. Uh, about a, uh, Pen Paradise says about a year ago I had a lot of free time on my hands and would meditate for one or so hours at a time. Kind of sad, really. Well, I mean, is, is it sad? But, you know, uh, Sam Harris, the guy whose podcast I love, he does, he's done retreats where he goes away for three months and it's all day, every day meditating. I'm like, Ow, why? What are, what are you accomplishing? But I mean, he also writes lots of incredible books and has an incredible podcast. Uh, so who am I to judge? Um... Spike says, gaming can be meditative too, like when you're in the game, in the flow state, and the rest of the world melts away. Yeah, that's where I learned about flow state, is from game design. And, and then I found out, oh, and it's in lots of other fields as well. Garrett says, which is all the more reason for it. Spike says, that's why I love shmups. Yes, shoot 'em ups definitely are all about getting in that flow. And when that flow is broken, that's when you die over and over. Uh, Paradesk says, has the stream died for anyone else? Uh, well, not for me. Uh, Stefan says, running fine for me right now. Spike says, still up for me. Paradesk says, it's back now. Stefan says, regarding games, Josh, have you ever played Freelancer from 2003? Just installed it two days ago. No, I have not played Freelancer. Is that a space sim? It sounds vaguely familiar, but I cannot recall it. See if we're ready for a second rubber yet. close enough.
mark my sticks so it's always easy to remember which side goes in which slot. Now, Sierra says, off topic here, but did you know that on average people spend 20 years sleeping if they live to be 60? Yep, a third of our life. That's really frustrating. Arsenic says, Morrowind is something from that period I've gotten into again. The graphics overhaul is just perfect. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I tried, I tried that a while ago and couldn't get past the graphics. Which is dumb because, like, I started making video games in 1996 when graphics were much 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 worse than that and was very proud of the graphics that I made in those days and the fact that I can't go back and play uh, <laughs> a game with with you know better graphics than what I was proud of previously is kinda kinda odd isn't it but and yeah it makes such a difference like you get I guess it's like you get used to a certain quality of life sort of thing Andy says, woo, two more of those sections left to condition. Yikes. Well, glad you got someone to listen droning on and on uh, while you do that. Arstick says, hands down, the best game made by man, mostly because it predates the auto tree generating stuff, so every last rock is hand placed. Oh, that makes it better to you to have everything hand placed? Um. I mean, it can, but then you also end up running into, like, fatigue issues for the developers. And, I don't know, it, to me, it, it, like, transfers where the quality takes place. Or maybe, maybe it's a quantity issue. Like, if the game's not massive, hand-placing every rock and tree is certainly doable. You know, in a game like Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, like, those, those games... Sure, you can place all of those props by hand, but like in Guild Wars 2, uh, we would still be working on the first zone, like to this day, if we had to hand place everything. Good. And he says, how will I know I've arrived as an, at an artist? Being able to pay someone else to condition my clay for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't got there yet. Paradusk says, Kingdom Hearts 2 and Metal Gear Solid 2 perfectly get me in that zone. Really? Okay. I did a, a skit that I was working on editing recently where I was... A uh, solid snake in the cardboard box in Metal Gear Solid 2 and getting constantly interrupted by Rose calling on her on my little device. I'm sure lots of people have done that skit because it's just such an obviously ridiculous thing. But um I was making a point for my for my video series. My upcoming game design video series. Okay. Uh, Stefan says, it's a space sim, exactly. Uh, Arsenic says, it's the triangle pelvises, dude. Tri oh, boy. That must be referencing something. Oh, oh, the, as far as, the, like, the bad graphics. <laughs> yes, having a triangle for a pelvis is, is not good. Um, oh, another one like that was uh, Thief, the original Thief game. I watched a really interesting, you know, video analysis of, of how... Oh, I should be pointing to this. Of how Thief, the original, is so superior to the remake that they did and went over all the reasons. And man, those characters are hilariously bad. Hi, Mr. Tree Stump. Everyone subscribe to Mr. Tree Stump's channel. He's, he wants uh, subscriptions. Uh, Nasser says, I'm far from being a gamer. I get serious headache when I hold the controller. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Gaming is so fun. It's like, my wife is like that. She really wants to like games, but she just doesn't and can't. 
Although she played all of Plants vs. Zombies. And, uh, what was the other one? Yeah, it was, it was weird. Some people just have different brains and react differently to that kind of stuff. Oops. See what happens when you aren't holding your paper towel to begin with? Waste material. Nick says, I was just typing that the character models were amazingly awful. Yep. Uh, I was blessed that the first fully 3D game I, I worked on during the, you know, that time period did not have humans in it. It was uh, Descent 3. So that was all, you know, robots. So weird angular forms totally made sense on them. Nasir says, so how far in the future are we going to be able to play without a controller, like with our minds? Well, so we tried going controllerless with the uh, Xbox, um, whatever that's called. I keep forgetting what that's called. I have, I have friends who literally developed it, and I can't ever remember what it's called. One sec. So there is a thickening agent for this that I want to mix into it. Uh, it might be in the kitchen. I keep a lot of my materials not in the garage because of the heat temperatures that it goes through. So give me one moment. Be right back.
All right, well, I'm very sad. I apparently lost my thickening agent, which means I'm going to have to spend a lot more time babysitting this stupid mold. Oh, well, things happen. Uh, let's see. Hecken said, maybe you can develop a game where the main character is meditating while fighting distracting ideas by sucking into flashback memories. Therefore, the real game time is five minutes or so. Wow, that's deep, man. Uh, yeah, someone should do that. Arsenic says, no way, I love Descent. Did you play Descent 3? That's the one I worked on. Uh, Stefan says, how's the clay doing, Andy? Are you still conditioning it, or is it conditioning you? Oh, wow. Another, another deep question. Hakan says, the company Neuralink is actually working on that. Not game-specific, though. Yeah, I mean, I know they have, like, eye tracking, targeting, that kind of stuff. Uh, Spike Sparkle says, found my old Descent 1 and 2 def definitive collection discs. Now to see if they run and if I still have an old joystick. Haha. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, joystick is pretty much mand mandatory for, <laughs> for those games. Um... I know that Descent 3, I assume the other ones too, are, is on uh, good old games. And, you know, it'll, it'll got all the current drivers and should run pretty well. And it's probably only like five bucks or something. I worked on that and I did a uh, uh, expansion pack called Descent 3 Mercenary. Uh, where I got to do a couple of the actual levels. That was my first real level design gig. I made a giant space station that was so big it broke the engine completely. It had like hundreds of rooms and it had all like this whole ecosystem for robots. It had had like their training facility and like a gym and all their private apartments and um, a cargo bay that you sneak into by coming in through a like a big cargo box that you blast out of at the beginning. Um, yeah, it's pretty epic. Probably looks like total crap now. Uh, Garrix, uh, Andy says, I don't know, Arsenic says, Descent 2 was one of my first PS1 games I bought for myself. Oh, cool. Um, Andy says, on prior topic, if video game worlds are generated, what if our world is generated as we go? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's, serious physicists out there saying that our world is a hologram so who knows <clears throat> paradox says people are all all around the world so i don't think so ah but are people around the world or is it just you imagining all of us that is the solipsistic debacle like there's there's no way you can prove other people exist uh Spike says, hmm, my Descent Discs might not be definitive as advertised. It doesn't have the third and best since Josh worked on it. That's right. The first two were crap because I didn't work on them. Uh, Nasir says, Josh, are you going to make a separate art book for your novel or mix the two together? So my novels are going to be filled with art. There's going to be lots of art in them, much more than most novels. Um, and when I have enough of the art collected... Yeah, um, I'm sure I'll put together an art, art of Talafar book. It will be especially exciting once I can start collaborating with better artists than myself and really like bring those designs to the absolute like top-notch excellence that they can be. One thing I've learned is that teams of creative people who get along and like each other well can make way cooler things than any of the individuals do on their own. Okay, Big Green says, gotta leave early. Bye guys. Bye Big Green. Thanks for stopping by. Spike Sparkle, yeah, prove we aren't living in a simulation right now. <laughs> yep, can't do it. Stefan says, solipsism is a fun concept. Is it fun, really? It seems kind of lonely. Uh, 
Uh, Andy says, think of Schrodinger, though. We don't know until it's observed. So what if there is nothing until it's observed? So as more things are observed by another consciousness, atoms, space, so it exists. I can't, I can't prove that's not the case. All that, like, crazy, uh, you know, um, what's called physics has all sorts of crazy theories that I I don't understand the maths enough and you know the the real problem the skeptical side of me says you, so much of that stuff is unprovable it feels like and they claim that the math adds up and they claim that it's the reason that we're able to make all these inventions and they can um, produce verifiable, uh, repeatable experiments using these maths, and that's cool, but I, I don't know if all their explanation, if that means their explanations of why the things are working and repeatable are necessarily true or right. I totally agree that the human brain was not evolved to comprehend the things that they're talking about, so I have no problem with things that are not intuitive. Um, but I also don't just blindly assume that because we're able to repeat things based on those theories, that that necessarily makes the theories correct. Nasir says, I mean, if it's my novel, my world, my work, I think I prefer to work on it alone. Uh, yeah, that is the case for most people. The reason, and, and it's usually generally the case for me, like I like making my own stuff and having complete control over everything. Uh, the reason that I gave up on that idea for my particular world is what I'm trying to accomplish can never be accomplished by one person. Like, one person could not make Star Wars, you know what I mean? Um, and, man, if George Lucas was the only guy who was allowed to work on Star Wars, how crappy would that be? I mean, you almost had that with Episode One, But, I mean, like, the prequels, they had incredible artists making incredible art for it, at least. So it had that going for it. But yeah, like, I want my world to be scientifically plausible, which means I need, I would need to know as much as every scientist in every field in order to make that happen, and that's just, it's, it's literally impossible. So, I have no problem saying this is going to be a huge group project. Andy says, I'm fascinated by quantum physics. That's cool. Uh, I'm fascinated in some way and repulsed in others. <laughs> Uh, Paradusk says it's nothing, so it's something. Uh, someone is saying something that uh, stuff exists since there isn't a way to go out of it anyway, so just go with it. Oh, it's pro probably you're talking about if there's a hologram, then yeah. Yeah, it is true that um, a lot of those things, it's like, well, wh what would you do if that was the case? Like, how would that change any way you live your life or policies that you make, you know, I, yeah. Amy says, I generally trust physicists to know what they're doing, and even if they aren't real, it's the best we've got so far, and it's likely to change in the future as we learn more. Yep, yeah, I, I trust them to the extent that I trust any human brain, you know what I mean? I certainly don't think anyone's out there actively trying to deceive people, uh, but I know enough about um, uh, cognitive biases uh, that to know that every human, even the smartest physicist, is prone to make mistakes about their work and their interpretation of their work. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say, you particular physicist got this this particular thing wrong, you idiot. No, that's that's not my place. That would be really dumb. S 
Stephen says, I think it's pretty accepted in physics that our current explanations are lacking. Yes. Andy says, by that thought, creativity is most noble of concepts because by the nature of existence is through perpetual evolution of each building block of matter into larger structures. Uh, creativity, yes. Creativity is kind of like the opposite of entropy. Um, and that, that's probably what's exciting about it to me. Paradox says, nihilism is always one of those topics that seems childish to me. Just because whatever you say, people can uh, just say it doesn't matter in the end. So, yeah, I have, a, I have a friend on Facebook that I get in all these debates with. And um, he called himself a nihilist, but he's also a huge activist. And so I was, I was like... My, my understanding of nihilism is more of an attitude than an actual philosophy. And he was saying the philosophy is just the rejection that there is an absolute standard of, you know, like ethical norms and that kind of stuff. And I had never heard that definition of nihilism, so I don't know what to think of that, but... It's probably one of those things that has like a serious literature of like good philosophers doing good philosophy under that and then it just gets popularized by Nine Inch Nails and then people are like, oh, so it means just like being a bummer about life and not caring. That's what nihilism is. I, I don't know. Probably. Sophia's taken off. Bye, Sophia. Thanks for stopping by. Spike says, Paradesk, I agree, it can only go so far as a pragmatic worldview where you have to cooperate with others and make something out of your life. Yep. Man, I really wish I had my thickening stuff. Can't, still can't believe it disappeared. It doesn't help that it's in this teeny tiny little bottle. It could literally be like under my chair or something. Spike says, much easier to be a nihilist if you live in a dark basement and your parents pay for everything. LOL. <laughs> That's probably true. Lots of things are easier if that's the case. But then lots of other things are harder if that's the case as well, so... Paradusk says, what's the point in saying that things don't matter and aren't real? It's way better to actually help people in your own world. Well, I mean, it's better if other people are real. If other people aren't real, then is it better? It's still probably better either way for your own mental health. Even if everyone else is an imaginary hallucination or hologram, um, how we treat them still impacts the way we feel about ourselves. So, yeah, I think you're probably right about that. Like, no matter what conceptual framework you lay over reality, uh, you're still your brain, or your mind, or whatever you want to call it, and you clearly have a lot of, like, cause and effects going on in your brain. Like, if you treat people like crap, you generally are going to feel like crap. And if you treat people well, you usually feel better about yourself, so... Spike says, it's a thought exercise. Nihilism can help you identify and reject garbage social schemas. There you go. I cannot confirm or deny that. I have not looked into nihilism sufficiently yet. Um... I have read a lot of 
uh, Nietzsche and listened to several college courses about Nietzsche and found a lot of his um, thoughts useful for that, that like thinking through uh, priorities and motives and that kind of stuff. Although he's, a lot of people say his stuff leads to nihilism, but as far as I know, he's existentialism, which some people, I guess, automatically assume if you're existentialist, it's a kind of a one-way street to nihilism. But yeah, I don't know. Like I come from a very particular philosophical background of you know uh, evangelical Christianity, where they were pretty much skeptical of everything that wasn't Western. Uh, enlightenment like pre-1700s <laughs> and and even a lot obviously a lot of enlightenment thinking they, they were very uh gave the side eye to as well rx77 says this is some neon genesis type stuff uh, yeah, we already discussed how I, I don't, uh, watch anime, so I don't know the reference. You're talking about the philosophical mumbo-jumbo? Paradusk says, I'd rather do something about it rather than just complain, lol. Yep, that's a great disposition to have. Sadly, not everyone shares that disposition. A lot of people take excruciating pleasure in complaining about things. Spike says, but if truly nothing matters, then why not end it all? Yeah, it doesn't make for a good outlook. <laughs> uh, you know, if nothing in the universe has intrinsic matter, then it is up to you personally to imbue uh, meaning on it, and I, I don't, I don't know that that's a bad thing, um, unless the meaning you put on it actually harms other people, in which case I, I would say that is a bad thing. Uh, Amy says, Kurtzgart, in a nutshell, made a good video on philosophy they call optimistic nihilism that makes sense to me, basically because the universe doesn't care about people, you should care. Okay. I have to check that out. I have not uh, watched any Kurtzgart uh, videos. Spike says, and find what matters to you instead of nothing matters. It's probably going to just make you happier. Yeah, I would think so. But I don't know. I, I have a very positive disposition by nature so it's really hard for me to extrapolate how these philosophies impact other people's personalities and how they put meaning on things and treat other people as a result like to me that's that's the most important part is like how are you treating people uh in your life how are you interacting with people you don't like are you terrible to them you know, do you justify being terrible to people because of your philosophy? Then I am not a fan of your application of your philosophy. Uh, Trevor Webb. Hi, Trevor. Says, missed the start. What exactly are you doing there? I'll just go back and watch the last three hours. You'll see. No, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Man, I don't even uh, honestly know how to describe what I'm doing. I, I'm literally scooping goop out of a hole and spreading it uh, out on the sides of the hole and over the stick. Uh, what I'm trying to do is recreate the inside of an oct rock like I had here. I'm redoing this rock formation that sits inside of this mold so that when I put paint on the inside of it and you see it from the outside it'll look like there's translucent octrock flesh that's filled with rocks underneath and 
there's no way I can really disassemble this to demonstrate how this is accomplishing that. But uh, you'll you'll see it in the mold making tutorial once I once I post that. Stefan says cantaloupe melon colored goop is involved, though, if you're into that. Yes. <laughs> Amy says treat people nicely, whether or not they exist. That's right. It uh, probably can't hurt. The only caveat I put on that is... Um, some people interpret treating people nice as uh, as thinking that they need to always do what everyone else says and that's a dangerous position to put yourself in in your life that happened to me in my first marriage and that was very sad because when you're with a dysfunctional person and they're making demands of you their demands are dysfunctional and end up destroying uh, not just your relationship with them but your relationship with people around them so for me it's super important to know that there's a policy for knowing when to let people go out of your life when to uh, strategically retreat from certain individuals if at all possible Spike says, agree, Josh. That's why the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated, is the foundation of most ethical traditions. Yep, seems, seems to make sense. Rx77 says, yeah, I lived around an old black Baptist people, so anything other than God walking on water is crazy, lol. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a definite uh, anti-intellectualism uh, strain in a lot of the corners of Christian, uh, of specifically American Christianity. I don't know what it is about us that makes us so paranoid and afraid of anything that is even slightly challenging to our exact interpretation of what this holy book must mean. Well, I think I do understand it, but it's, it's quite, a, uh, quite a tangent. Okay, you know, ultimately, you just, you want to protect your family, you want to protect your kids, you don't want them to go to hell forever, so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go there, that's what my blog is for, if you guys want to hear me rant about this stuff for a million pages, there's probably more blog on there than there is War and Peace at this point, you can, you can check that out at uh, Confessions of a Quirky Christian Artist on Blogspot. You go there and you'll you'll look at some posts and you'll be like, wait, where's the scroll bar? And then you'll see, oh, it's that two pixels there. It's so tiny because I would have to scroll for an hour just to get to the bottom of one post. Entropy says this is definitely a sex toy. Um, you know, is it possible to make anything that, that could never be used for that purpose? I don't know. Trevor says thank you. I'm not sure uh, who he's thanking or why, but I'll just say you're welcome. Uh, Arsenic says Bill and Ted have the best philosophy. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. Excellent. That was one of those movies that I hadn't seen since I was a teenager <clears throat> and had to show my teenagers. And, uh, man, if you like uh, 80s retro, that 
that those two movies are uh well i guess the second one came out in the 90s did the first one come out in the 90s it might have been like eh, late late 80s or i don't know anyway uh yeah that's some serious 80s nostalgia there wow they're so bad but so good at the same time Entropy says, I hear you there, brother. Just got out of marriage to a dysfunctional person myself. Yeah, that was really rough on me because the way I was raised was like marriage is forever. And if you ever get a divorce, that means you can't ever remarry. So it's pretty much like signing a celibacy pact to get out of a divorce. Like in my mind, that's what it was. Like I could never look at women romantically again. And so... As a result of that, I tried to hang in there way longer than was healthy for anyone. And probably the people who paid the heaviest price for that was my kids, because they were exposed to someone who was literally a crack addict and was taking them to drug addict, you know, like dealers' houses and stuff. But I was convinced I. Like, if I did the right thing, God would reward me. Like, if I stuck with it, then everything had to turn out like a fairy tale in the end. But yeah, once I found out that they were at drug dealers' houses and literally playing with bullets, they told me, uh, that's when I was like, all right, done. I, uh, I will sacrifice anything to make that stop. Uh, Amy says, historically it makes sense. A lot of American Christianity comes from Puritan ideas and other people who care deeply about that stuff. Yeah, so that was, um, yeah, it, it's interesting to think like all these people were basically running away from the establishment uh, culture and saying, no, we know the right way to live. You guys are all living the wrong way. And then you end up with a whole country founded by, you know, that, that psychological profile. It's going to resonate <laughs> for generations, to be sure. Uh, and it probably explains a lot about the American psyche. Rx says, I don't understand. My great grandma thinks the world is only as old as the Bible, and Cain had sex with monkeys, and that's how dark people are made. Uh, and, uh, oh, that is so sad. Um, yeah. What are you going to do? You know, some percentage of any population is going to to have really, really awful ideas. <laughs> it's like, what do you do? I don't know. Uh, RX says, but she was 93. Yeah, that's how, that's how cultures change, is <laughs> the old people die off and the young people have different ideas. And hopefully the different ideas are better ideas, although, and some of the stuff that's been going on uh, lately in the U.S. kind of makes me question that. It's like, are we just headed back to repeating a lot of these terrible ideas? I don't know. I think, like in general, I'm an optimist. And I think the trajectory of history has been positive uh, for more people than for less. And... Even though it's slow, painfully slow, especially for the people who are oppressed and suffering and don't have the kind of privileges that I do, um, like, future generations are going to see it better and better and better as we go. That's my optimistic hope. Rasta says, thank God I grew up with no religious education whatsoever. Yes, pin, pun intended. Yep, that is the standard French model, my, is my understanding. Is, uh, 
No, no religion whatsoever. Um, I'm personally, like, I'm really glad I was raised the way I was raised, even though I don't take all of the stuff literally anymore. Um, I feel like it did build a really solid foundation for becoming a person who could help other people now. Like, I wasn't that person for quite a while. Oh, I got a little spider floating down above my head. How cute. See a little spider? You want to say hi to the people? Hi! Can you guys see him? Let's see bring him into focus. He really wanted to come on my head. What, wasn't someone uh, mentioning that there needs to be more Halloween stuff? Well, there you go. Alright, he's going to go live in this wonderful trash can now. He doesn't have to die, he just has to live in the trash can. Uh, RX77 says, yeah, dinner was super fun with my white girlfriend. We always come home with laughs. Uh. It's good to be able to take uh, things with uh, with laughter. I mean, when it's when it's a toothless grandma saying those things, great. It's good that it can be laughed at. When it's like a bunch of dudes carrying semi-automatic weapons and torches, uh, that's not so laughably funny. Mortifer. Hi, Mortifer. Says, how long is curing time of your goo? Uh, usually around 15 to 20 minutes, but when you want it to cure, then it will take half an hour or an hour. Uh, Spike says, I constantly feel like I was born 1,000 years too early or too late. <laughs> yeah. I, I can identify with that. Um... Uh, not too, not too late. I hate having dirty hands. My understanding of history is that people just were always dirty all the time, and they just kind of had to deal with it. And so I would not have been a happy camper. Spike says, hi spider, bye spider, thanks for eating insects. Yep, they do a very valuable job. I appreciate that. Unfortunately, they also try to eat my wife, and she gets, like, these massive uh, reactions to them that, like, swell up and turn into hard lumps, and, like, you can, tra you can see the poison going, following her veins, going towards her lymph nodes. And so I have to be a lot rougher with spiders when they're in the house than I am uh, when they're in the garage. All spiders must die in the house, sadly. Uh, Stefan says, Spider is honorary stream co-host. Yep, I'll have to put him in the credits. Or her. Paradusk said, Spider silicone. That was about to happen. I mean, that spider was headed directly down into the silicone. So, I, I saved it. RX77 says, I have to look past that, because if I don't, I get really mad. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, how do, how do you deal with, <laughs> the, so a couple weeks ago, I was at the grocery store, and on my way in, I passed a, a young black man, and a, like, middle-aged white guy. The young black man says to me, uh, hey, has anyone ever told you you look like, um, Chris Angel? That's what he said. Uh, who is a, like, like, a goth, uh, uh magician type guy. <clears throat> I heard the name. I, I couldn't remember exactly what he looked like. I was like, uh, no, I haven't heard that one before. Thanks. Yeah, I'm kind of awkward if I don't know you. So I was just kind of like, uh, okay. 
walk past. <clears throat> then I'm standing in line at the pharmacy, and the white guy who was out there walks by, and he's like, hi, Chris Angel, haha, ha. you know, just, just kind of laughing about that as, as a joke. And then he's like, black people, they're so dumb. Yeah, uh, he said the most insipid, racist, it, it wasn't even like clever in any way. It was like, they're so stupid or something like that. And I was, I was still like in that phase where I had the mirror neurons going of, uh, you know, he was smiling at me, so I was smiling back. And it didn't even register what he was saying until he had like passed me. And I was just, I was so stunned. I had, like, what? That's, like, I literally have not heard anyone be blatantly race, racist in my, you know, my little uh, Northwest uh, U.S. hippie commune uh, bubble that I'm in. Like, I just don't see that sort of thing. Like, white collar, work in a video game company, you know what I mean? There's just, there's no open racist around me. Uh, so I was just totally caught, and I was like, ah, and I, and I didn't say anything to him because I, you know what I mean? I felt so bad and stupid about that. Um, and then, and so I was just kicking myself for the next 10 minutes. You know, I was in line at the pharmacy, got my medicine, went out to the car. And then as I'm loading into the car, guess who like walks up right in front of me? Uh, the dude. And he he looks at me with that smirk, like, "Hey, let's let's joke about how stupid black people are again, right?" But because I had been mentally berating myself for the past ten minutes, I was like cocked and loaded and ready to go. And so, just as he's about to talk, I go, "Hey, dude, it's 2017," and he was like, "What? What? 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 Do, what, what do you mean?" I'm like, "It's a great year to stop being a racist." And then, and then I said a cuss word, which I'm not going to say uh, on the air because I want this to be a family channel. Um, <laughs> and he was, he was a actually, he was more stunned than I was stunned previously. He was just like, oh, uh, uh, and I just got in my car and drove off. And it was beautiful. I was like, you know, people like that, they need to receive resistance there needs to be mental consequences emotional consequences for being that way so it was important for me to do that rasta says do you consider yourself a deist now do you believe in a higher power i do but the three abrahamic religions are simply not for me uh my answer to that is i am a complete i have no idea ist which is kind of like being agnostic but most agnostics tend to be pretty um, not as studied as I am. Let's put it that way. I've spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time and money and emotional energy researching the topic of religion and spirituality. So most people, when they say they're agnostic, it's just because they really don't care about the topic much or haven't thought about it much, or I'm very much the opposite. So it's weird to say agnostic. I just say, I don't, I don't trust myself to know enough to answer questions of gods and spirits and anything outside of what scientists tell me with any amount of certainty. I'm just like, I don't know, man. You know, be excellent to each other. And, and let's just, we, we can, we can, we can stay on that little on that little common ground for as long as we like. We don't have to branch off into other uh, doctrine <laughs> unless it's super important to you, and then I'm happy to go there. But for the most part, when it comes to interacting with other people, I'm happy to just say, I don't know, man. Uh, Spike says, yeah, one 1,000 year old hygiene leaves a lot to be desired, but I yearn for a time when a person could live totally isolated, make his or her own way. Not all land was owned by governments and pre-firearms. Yeah, well, if you're into that sort of thing, there's still land in Alaska you could go be that way probably. 
And he says, but women have no rights, basically in the tin tins. Yes, women were very poorly treated throughout the vast majority of history and the vast majority of cultures, and that's, that's bad. How do you like that for, for an eloquent moral statement? That's bad. Uh, and he says that most people died before their 40s. Uh, yeah, most people died uh, during childbirth. I mean, most infants died, and then a lot more children died. But once you got past childhood, my understanding is your life expectancy was, was pretty close to what it is now. Spike says, women's rights did suck, but there was enough ungoverned land that if a woman really wanted to, she could totally separate herself from a government and homestead, essentially. Yeah, until, uh, in, until a community forms close enough that people know about her, and then she's the witch. And then, and then you know what happens from there. Uh, Dottie says, this is a great stream. I'm loving the conversation, but I've got to leave now. See you next time. See you, Dottie. Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you like uh, pedantic, philosophical jibber-jabber. Spike says, mortality rates can be misinterpreted by high infant death rates. Agree, lives were shorter, but I'd still rather live 40 years totally free than 80 years a slave to government and wages. Uh, that's fair. Paradusk says, I'm agnostic because I'm not sure... Uh, but if there is some kind of deity, it's better to say I wasn't sure than I thought you weren't real. Yeah, hopefully there's no, like, old angry dude up there who's going to be like, Why didn't you believe X, Y, and Z? How dare you not believe that? Uh, that would suck. Um, Spike says, I also realize I'm in a significant minority with my wishes, though. Yeah, I don't think most people want to be a hermit. RX-77. On my first job, I was accused of stealing a lady's ring. She yelled that if that I would because I'm black, and that's what we do. Later, she found it in her purse, and a friend asked, uh, asked her if she would apologize, and she said, what to an N-word, which I'm also not going to say on this family stream. Uh, I will never forget that. That's a that's like a trope in television where the you know whenever they want to establish a racist character like that exact scenario plays out. You stole my thing, and then you know they find it in their pocket or you know in a drawer or something. Um, man, I am so sorry that happened to you, RX. That really sucks. You know, just knowing that sort of thing happens still happens on a regular basis is something that optimists like me need to need to keep hear, hearing and being reinforced that it does happen because it's too easy for you know white folks like me to just like be oblivious to stuff because it's not in our face all the time every day like i have a, a black brother and a black sister but you know they're grown and in different states now so again i'm not not exposed to that stuff all the time Nasir says, Josh, what's the meaning of life? I know it, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, it is, however, exactly how old I am right now. And I was born in 1975, April 1975. So you can work out the math and find out what the meaning of life is. Uh, Spike says, I actually did look into squatting in Alaska, LOL. <laughs> I lived in North Pole, Alaska for five, six years. Uh, man, that place is not for me. It is funny, though, how many, like, disgruntled, antisocial people live in Alaska specifically because they are, want the low population density. And there's this idea that, you know, Alaska is where you can be finally left alone from the gold darn government. Um, yeah, so I'm very familiar with that sentiment. <laughs> 
Andy says, uh, oh, Andy scrolled away. Come back, Andy. Seven says, I would have, I would love to live in a romanticized version of the past times, some of the time, but the real past, not so much. Yes, exactly. I want to live in, in fantasy world, like Dungeons and Dragons, where I can go around with the sword and slay orcs and goblins. And I guess that's what video games are for. Uh, and he says, hopefully that's enough clay to get a few jars sculpted in between the large dragon posable doll. Treating myself to some noms before uh, working something. Woo, day's work. All right, good job. Working on something else. Uh, and he specifies. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome that you're getting a bunch of boring grunt work done during a stream. I love that. I mean, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just sitting here stirring a pot of goo. <laughs> but I get to I get to talk to people about uh, stupid ideas and philosophy, and it's totally cool. Um, Rasta says, don't worry, Rx. Karma is a B. I, should I say the B word on my stream? No, I'm just, I'm just going to be totally goody, goody two-shoes. Um, and I'll take care of her sooner or later. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I'd like to think that's true. Um, I think it's it's mostly up to people to make that happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think there's a magical karma floating around that does that. Um, let's see, Paradusk says, you might want to invest in a heat bed for lizards. You can put your clay on it and it won't be as difficult to work with. Yeah, I, I've actually done that, uh, especially for my uh, clean clay that I use for building mold boxes. I have a lizard bed. I don't I haven't used that recently. I think it may have disappeared in the move. Entropy says, I've always been an atheist. The idea of an all-powerful god never made sense to me. I've seen no evidence for one, so I'm happy to continue not believing. Same with fairies. Uh, I can prove they I can't prove they don't exist, but I see no evidence for it. Yep, depends on what you consider evidence. Um, I know, so for a lot of religious and spiritual people, um, emotional states are evidence for them. And I, I was that way for a long time. I, I was a, a Christian apologist for many years, meaning that I would like actively try to convince people that they were wrong about not being Christians and why they should be Christians. And so I studied a lot. I learned a lot. Um, I mean, it's one of the main things that led me to my more moderate views on, on the subject was actually spending the time to look deeply into the claims. And, uh, yeah, what, what really got me was brain science. Like, the more I learned about, about I brought this up three times now, uh, cognitive um, biases uh, and illusions, the more, uh, the more I realized that, um, well, my emotions specifically, I can't speak for all people, my emotions specifically are not good evidence for anything. Um, I just don't think I am qualified to make all-encompassing statements about the nature of reality. I am a finite person with a brain made out of meat, <laughs> and uh, yeah, beyond that claim, I am not comfortable making any further claims. Garrett says, it's not that hard to work with. I just make huge batches at a time because I work so large. Amy says, I agree, Entropy. Uh, RX77 says, true, Rasta. I just hope people like that learn that we are all one race. Yeah, race is a weird sort of modern construct. I mean, obviously, people in different regions have evolved different pigmentations and physiognomic features. Uh, but the idea that there's some kind of, some kind of like, 
I don't know, uh, ontological bucket that puts you in as a result of having a certain constellation of those features is a very weird, silly concept that probably has a long and terrible legacy. Paradox says, are you trying to say that stirring a pot of goo isn't the most riveting experience? I mean, maybe if I was a witch, I'd be more into it. I mean, I, I did almost put uh, spider legs into it. I think uh, this will be wrapped up in the next 10 minutes, though, and I will be done. Considering the stream is over three and a half hours long now, um, <laughs> it's pro probably a good time to do something that's not orange goo pot stirring. Let's see. Spike says, uh, if any government finds oil under those disgruntled Alaskans, though, they'll soon realize they're in the grip of governments just like everyone else. I just wish there was a legal way to opt out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't be opposed to that. Arsenic says that lizard idea is amazing. RX77 says, I've been with my girlfriend for seven years, and every time I deal with that, I come home to her, and I just wish the people, like, with whatever they're going through, she's making me strong. I must have butchered that, or you butchered the writing. Uh, but I think I get the sentiment. Paradusk says, I don't get how America can be so forward-thinking, but be so traditional in the same way. There's very little racism in the UK for the most part, unless you're a Muslim, of course. Poor guys have it bad. Uh, Nasir says, I was born religious, so in my dis uh, so it's not my decision, but I like to think that I'm it's this mindset that makes you feel depressed if you start questioning your beliefs. <laughs> yeah, so being raised religious, uh, you have not only these kind of beliefs and philosophies you're supposed to adopt, but they're connected in a web of relationships, right? Your, your relationships with your family, your community, uh, co-religionists, so it's one of those things where deep questioning, your brain is going to work hard to keep you from deeply questioning it because it is a threat to your social position. And if you think about like what, it, what was required to survive over the past however long humans have been around, um, being, being socially cohered into a group was a huge part of that. So your brain does not want you to sacrifice those bonds. It does not want you questioning what you were raised with. I mean, that goes just as much to, to atheists and agnostics as it does to religious people. You know, um, if you were raised a certain political orientation, same thing. Like, all those, all those ideologies that bind people together, uh, our brain is programmed to keep us from questioning. RX77 says uh, his sister moved to the UK and she loves it there. That's awesome. I don't know if I could get over um, the food. Like, I need to be able to get my American fast food fix every once in a while. And my understanding is UK fast food is not the same. Okay, Stefan says, going to catch some sleep then. Is next stream on Wednesday? Yes. I will always do streams on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights, and I will try to do streams on weekends whenever it makes sense to do so. So you can always count on Wednesday nights. Uh, RX77 says, yeah, working in Mesh Mixer. I'm really bad at typing. Kind of don't talk online often. Oh, well, thanks for talking so much on my stream, RX. I appreciate that. Uh, it was really great getting to know stuff about you. So I hope you come back and type some more. All right, I think this, this stuff is sufficiently stiffened that I can finally stop and like eat some food, go to the bathroom, uh, other things that biological organisms need. Breathing, I'll probably do some breathing. Um, yeah, 
So here we go. Let's see what kind of uh, crazy numbers I get on a three and a half hour long stream. I'm, I'm guessing I'm not going to have a high retention, but maybe other people are fascinated by uh, random philosophical and religious uh, thoughts. So anyway, I will stick on the stream for another two minutes or so answering any final questions in text, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of your weekend, if there is any left for you.